Lately you don't feel like yourself and you kinda hate it You suppress all of the thoughts in your head and say it's complicated You hide your pain, but I can see it Head start your face, I know the feeling I Swear you're okay, but you barely breathe it Don't you walk away And welcome in to the second set here today in the Camelot Smite League. We have a Merlin Division matchup coming at you now between Going Ghost and the Cyberpunk Otters. I am once again Dr. Shrew, joined by Cthulhu Senpai with Red Rosy Panda on the cameras as always as picks and bands are quickly getting underway. How are you feeling heading into this match, Senpai? This is going to be an interesting matchup coming into the new season. First week onto the next patch. Not much is really going to be changing here, but we are going to be seeing the tankiness of the solo laners coming back just a slight bit with those nerfs. Should be interesting to see if we still see some of those more uh, damage-focused solo laners if we head back to what uh, we're used to with that tanky frontline coming out of the solo lane. When it comes to picks and bans here, we got... Hebwa, Thor, and Bakasura taken away by Going Ghost. One of the Otters have opted to take away that Marty and Mercury so far. Seems like Going Ghost is going to be opting to span out as many jungles here as possible. I do know Ice Steel Buff is a very solid jungler. I'm not sure how well he's been doing down here in this division. And then Otters are going to be going for a little bit of a hybrid approach, banning out the support, jungle, and an ADC. That definitely seems like Going Ghost is going to force buffs to kind of reach a little deeper into his god pool here, as that Terra is the final ban locked in by the Cyberpunk Otters on the other side. Vamana hovered and instantly locked in for Going Ghost. 
Bit of a flex pick there, could go into the solo lane for just Kyle, or could also be a jungle pick for Vicar there. <laughs> Three very solid picks coming to the first round. Hercules into the Vamana is not as strong because he's just going to be playing passive on that Vamana if he is. But that Merlin pick against that Vom is going to be melting him very fast in the ultimate. Definitely he's not going to be able to get that shield up in time to be able to sustain it. The fire stance for Merlin having that extra prot shred on there allows him to eat through what Vamana is going to be doing, regardless of what role he's into. I like the Hercules pickup, um, regardless of where the Vamana goes. Hercules is just so strong right now, easily probably the best solo laner in my opinion. Uh, in this current meta, he just brings so much to team fights. He's impossible to kill with his heal, and he's got some decent. Uh, kill secure and like objective steal with that ultimate definitely a top five solo leaner right now alongside ramana they will all obey it's like it's going to be the ishtar picked second overall for going ghost good pick up there for their dual lane charlo going to be able to do good damage numbers with how well ishtar plays around the crit currently Definitely another solid pickup. Ishtar has just been that 180C that everyone knows he's going to carry. You. Alongside the Odin Cage will make it just a very difficult matchup for this team. The Zeus hover on the side of the Cyberpunk Autos. If this gets locked in, how do you feel like Zeus right now? How do you feel about Zeus right now? Excuse me. Zeus is going to be easily slapped around in this game right now with just those first three <laughs> picks. Being Odin caged and either having to force get that shell, and even in the early game, he's not going to get out of that cage. But his ult does do a little bit of countering, filling that entire cage up, so it could go either way with that matchup. Yeah, it would be interesting if they decide to lock that in. I'm not sure if they will. The Odin uh, lock-in for the side of Going Ghost does tell me that Bamana will be going to Vicar in the jungle role, so we'll have Odin and Hercules battling it out in that solo lane as the Zeus hover does not end up getting locked in, instead opting to take that Rama to try and keep up with the pressure that Ishtar can bring in that dual lane. That's a solid pick into this team comp so far. I like where the Otters are going, but I feel like going Ghost has a little bit of a better pick right here. They definitely do have quite the strong top three as we head into the second set of bands. Going Ghost still need a mid laner and a support pickup. And though I suppose the Odin support uh, also could be an option. So they do have some flex potential still in there. Decided to take away that Susano while on the other side cyberpunk otters take away that toth in the mid lane not wanting baked goods to have access to that mid laner some solid bands coming in here with that foe the poke potential with that odin cage is just too much for them to be able to go against alongside that agni as well same problem with him the massive poke that they could have just because of this odin is going to be too much for them to deal with at this point and then last they ban five jungles for the going ghost team as well yeah very much targeting out buffs he's gonna have to go a lot deeper Thanks, into the god pool and with the surter pick up i imagine that could be what buffs decides to play in the jungle it could also be the solo lane pickup and this hurt could be pushed into the support role for king balrus i have to wait and see they have the the flex in there as well kind of keep going ghost guessing until that last pick yeah, Moja hover here. Another solid support pick as well. So we do know that Odin might be going solo lane instead. Yeah, we lots of lots of different avenues. Both of these team comps could go. Um, if this is a Yamoja lock in, I'm definitely liking this go and ghost draft. I mean, Ishtar Yamoja is just kind of the most pressure you can possibly get Tremble, in the dual lane right now, as they do lock it in which pretty much secures the fact that this will be Yamoja support Odin in that solo lane and Mana in the jungle. I'm we expecting just wait. to see two shells on this Otters team here just for that Yamoja and that Odin. That is a lot of walls to get through, a lot of ways to trap you in, so I agree that we will and probably need to see it. coming in as well. 
Well, having I mean, an yeah, additional I mean, body block with that time for house. Definitely. And I mean, you were talking about the poke potential of Toth and the poke potential of Agni with that Odin cage. Baba Yaga with that those elixirs much. can definitely bring the same sort of play in there. So it's going to be very interesting to see how the cyberpunk otters decide to go against that. I think the Baba Yaga is a little bit of a better pick than the Thoth and the Agni to this having the extra silence and the CCs on her one, as well as the potions. Definitely so they can easily good... just lock anyone into that Odin cage. It's gonna be hard whenever that uh, Odin cage is off cooldown for the otters to play around it. I hope, as you said, they do decide to pick up. I mean, they have to at least pick up one of those phantom shells. Uh, if not, uh, pick up a second one. We oh, see God, here, so we're probably no going to have better. Cert going into All jungle success. lane for Ice Steel buffs there. That would be my assumption. Then Hercules over in that solo lane for Scalping Snake <clears throat> and King Balrus going for that Ganesha. I know that Balrus likes this Ganesha pick, so it's good to see him on something that he's comfortable on. How do you feel about Surtur in the jungle right now? It's not something we see too often. Right now, he has been nerfed a slight bit, but compared to being in a solo lane, he still has a lot of damage output for that jungle. He would be a very solid pick in there, but there were a couple better ones that he could have gone with. But with that Odin, he has a very good escape having that ultimate, so I think that's the better pick out of all the other jungles he has available. That's He'll very true. He's going to be able to dish out a lot of damage and be able to get out securely. Being able to probably build hybrid, which is what I'm expecting him to do. He does have that end of days ultimate will allow him to get out of that Odin cage or the River's Rebuke from Yamojo with relative ease that gives that makes Surtur such a safe pick, but he can also use it uh, as a, a good engage tool, though, if you do engage with that Surtur ultimate ability, it kind of does leave you a bit high and dry. You really have to trust that your team is going to be there to back you up once you land. As we can see, the full five-man drafts from both sides, is there a draft that you're sort of leaning towards as having the uh, advantage going into game one here? Definitely leaning towards that going ghost team, having the double crit output from the Ishtar and the Bamana. Crit's extremely potent right now, just melting down everything in its path. And that Odin Cage is locking anyone in from the early game. If they do not play this correctly in the early game for the Otters, they might just be, it might be game over for them going into the late game. Very true. Another thing that does help with the double walls that this Going Ghost team has is the Ganesh 3, his dash able to let him run through those player made walls. So at least the support will be safe to get out of there. Merlin has that flicker that can get through. Uh, we already mentioned the Surtur has the way to go up and get out of there. And Rom can at least buy time by heading up into that Astral Barrage uh, and wait for the cage to drop. Basically just the Hercules that is uh, doesn't quite have a way to get out of there, but he is Hercules. You might be uh, You might be trapped in the cage with him instead of the other way around. That is very true. So we head into game number one here between Going Ghost and the Cyberpunk Otters Merlin Division. You get a first chance to look at some of the builds here right off the bat. It seems Nothing... like both teams are often to do the same start here. Going from speed and blue to the backs, and then jungle and mid collapsing, collapsing on that red buff. I've been seeing more of that. I, I like that start. Uh... From from like the mid perspective, I feel like it's a it's a good start, but it that is. feels nice. It allows three of your laners to get to level three. Leaving that dual lane kind of just over the water, but their dual lane. They'll be fine going into that lane as well. Did I say level three or level two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, level two. It does get them to level two. Dual lane usually able to get to level two after the first few minions of the wave. As we see, both sides do tick over to that second level so far. A bit surprising to me that it looks like it is the Otter's dual lane that has the pressure. Ishtar Yamoja just can bring out so much. I mean, Rom can do a lot 
with those astral arrows, so no, definitely no slouch in terms of pressure either. Well, looking here, it is definitely the uh, cyberpunk, not cyberpunk, the uh, going ghosts that have the pressure in that duo lane. They have an extreme amount of poke on both of the otters. The Ganesh is already half, and going ghost isn't even close. Whether it came to that wave clear or not, they are definitely going to end up winning that duo lane. Unless some, something crazy happens in that lane. We have a big fight going on here in mid. Baba Yaga goes down to the mid lane here for the otters. He does. Jaxi getting the first blood there on that Merlin. Baked goods just caught out of position there. That was a good stun by buffs on the Surter to set up for that first blood. I saw that and... Mom really wanted to yank that dual lane and getting ahead of himself. And that put his men in a very awkward position there because of that. It really they are going to secure that shield buff, though. Baba Yaga should be able to uh, catch back up still there. Not something you want falling for first blood so early into this game. But with the house adding to her ability to stack, I assume she's heading into that Book of Toth first item. Should be able to catch up just fine to come back from that but it's exactly the start you want if you're the cyberpunk otters getting your merlin that early kill to try and quicken his uh pace towards that late game where he becomes such a threat yeah and with other yaga having to go a slightly older meta build it just makes merlin a little bit more aggressive having that do more online before that book of thoth as well Buffs here very early for this blue buff invade as the two solo laners fight it out. It looks like Odin getting a, a bit low there. Well. We do have Jaxi heading on over, off. but it looks like it was secured by Vicar there. So at least even if just Kyle was poked out quite a bit by Scalping Snake, he does he is able to get that blue buff. Uh which works out for this Go and Go squad. But I like the aggressive rotations coming out of Cyberpunk Otters here, making sure they were there in numbers for that blue buff. They do have an extremely aggressive level 1 to 5, but once that level 5 hits, it's going to be extremely difficult to get any ganks online with just these extremely powerful ultimates that the Go and Go team has. Ishtar being able to just get CC immunity and stun Odin with his ult Baba Yaga with their easy escape. They're trying to outplay them in this early game here as well as they can. So I think they know the dual lane isn't going to be going anywhere in this game, so they're just trying to play for the other lanes as well. Do you see a rotation from Vicar over towards this dual lane fight as it progresses? He is here, but it doesn't look like he's going to make it quite in time. We do see the Yokoja stop the gank with her three there. She does actually a lot of pressure on to Vicar now. Good Rivers Review though does buy some off. time. Colossal Fury does buy him even more time trying to make sure he can live through this. Home Sweet Home was used as well as in for end of days ultimate out of buffs. That's Lots of cooldowns getting there. Yeah. Not much coming out of it in the end. Just Can both teams making mid. sure that they're trying to fight and, and have that positional um, advantage there on that left side. That's going to leave this Baba Yaga extremely open for a gank at this point. I'm really expecting to see that Cert, if not the Ganesh as well, just collapse on her and just make your Punisher for that ultimate there. Will definitely make her more vulnerable until able to get that back up. Has the 10% CDR from that Sands of Time, but that is it so far when it comes to cooldowns. No surprise that we're seeing Scalping Snake uh, continually poke out just Kyle here. That's basically what Hercules does, is just bully you in the laning phase. This is going to be a very easy laning phase for that Herc. Besides the mana consumption he is going through, even with that blue buff, he's already down to about half. And it seems like the Odin's trying to conserve as much mana as he can. And we see Alt out from Ishtar. Dash just off the mark, but the autos are going to hit there. Lots of damage on Dapushka, but he should be able to retreat back behind his purple Narrowly buff. But we're definitely seeing that. Charlo here has that pressure, has that aggression, and it is uh, working out in his favor. It's 
left side of mid harpies picked up by the cyberpunk otters that ultimate from baked goods is back up so that layer of safety is back as well for this baba yaga as there's a small skirmish here in the mid lane the window to try and force at least force out the beads for baked goods is over for the time being Definitely getting slow here in the early game. Neither team seem to really want to fight as much as they do just want to deny each other farm. A very methodical and patient game thus far. Only one kill here. It's almost seven minutes into this match thus far. If we take a look at uh, these team comps, I don't know about you, but I feel like if this game does end up going late, the team with that Yemoja, with that Ishtar, and the Vamana are probably going to have the advantage if we uh, if we make it fully into the late game here. I would agree, if not for that Merlin pick. Crit is extremely good in this game, but as long as they keep that Merlin alive, he's just going to be free spamming in that back line, throwing as much abilities as he can. We do have Cirque going in deep on this mid lane, hoping to get that Baba Yaga with three people rotating in. She's going to be able to get out. Good peel from Matt Doc there. In back. He does take one of the Harpies with that. Very true. He's thinking about trying to invade this green buff, opting just to get a ward down He's and back over invasion. because there's a free yeah, kill. There. On to Pushka, indeed. Blinks in and manages to help secure that Charlo once again, just winning the 1v1s against Pushka on this Rama. Now, that could have been like a better gank there. He did not have to waste the blink, but still a solid kill nonetheless, helping them at least steady the gold lead that the Sire Pokotters are gaining. Seeing that Pushka has opted to go for Devo's Gauntlet, uh, first item over the Blood Forge. Is that. Do you like that call? Do you think Devos is in a decent spot right now? Devos is not really in a decent spot at all right now. I still think the AZ should be building that Blood Forge. They're about the same power, but Blood Forge does give so much more than Devos in terms of that passive as well as the attack speed. And the movement speed is helpful. Devos does give you that additional flat pen once it's evolved, which he could be trying to count on that to uh, sort of help round out his build. Might be opting for a slightly different build path than we're used to seeing out of Hunters here. We'll have to wait and find out if it ends up working out for him or not. With the nerf to percent pen, yes, the flat pen would be nicer, but he is mainly focused on those tanks as an ADC. That is his role. So... The correct build path would probably definitely be going that Blood Forge into the Dominance at the end. But I can, I think the build he might end up be going is Devos into Crit with an additional Aussie and Dominance near the end. It Just was. to be able to give him that highest sustain from that Devos Gauntlet. She buffs heading into that. Um newer tree of uh, healing hybrid items after the Jotuns. Wait and find out what he ends up choosing uh, out of those as we see some pressure onto just Kyle here on this Odin. He's got the Surger. He does Odin drop the Odin down cage, as well. And it should be enough to get him out safely, but they did force that ultimate. Meanwhile, on the other side, going Ghost pulling this Gold Fury. Taking Seems like the Otters game. are aware of it, and now they're opting to take the fight instead. Darmic Pillars comes out, as well as Colossal Fury from Vicar, who does get pretty low there, but is able to safely walk away back into the Tier 1 tower in mid. It looks like Going Ghosts are trying to, to be proactive here, pulling that Gold Fury, uh, but we're just unable to get the clean teamfight win or stick to the Fury. And we have Otters coming here, collapsing on that Gold Fury instead. But Going Ghost is around this Gold Fury. We did get a big pluck from Herc. But Yamoja negates it. An ult from Ishtar, and it is not stolen by that Ishtar. Otter secure, and they opt to back out of this fight here. It was a good attempt from Charlo there, trying to get that Ishtar ult to steal just slightly off the mark, but no harm, no foul fight. Not breaking out, Otter's opting to just take their prize and back up there. 
taking a look at the gold difference that gold fury did kind of even out where we were at 1100 in favor of the cyberpunk otters now actually as it looks like going ghost might try to answer back with a pyromancer nope they're gonna opt to just leave that pyromancer alone there looking here at the builds we do have the lamana rushing straight into crit i'm assuming that's going to be a bladed boomerang as well he doesn't seem to be taking advantage of that Vamana passive, giving him additional power for all the defenses that he has. Going into the Ishtar, she opted for the Blood Forge and Death's Toll build, different from the Gilded into Devos. She does have a lot more early potential now with that Blood Forge going on, but maybe once he gets to, now that he has that Devos stacked, he might be able to outpoke her a little bit more, being able to out sustain her with that passive and the additional life steal from Devos. You can also see that it looks like that, uh, if I'm correct, that is Vital Amplifier out of the uh, Surter of Ice Steel buffs, picking that up. I feel like that's a good item. It works well with what Surter can do. He's got the heal from his passive there, giving him that extra attack speed plus some health and MP5. Never a bad thing. A good, a good pickup after that Jotuns means he should be in a pretty good spot. Should be a decent power spike uh, for buffs on the Surter. We do have the Vamana going in on the on buffs here. He does have that ultimate up on the bomb, but he opts to just leave it knowing the Merlin was right behind him. He does indeed. That Boomerang Blade has been completed for Vicar, so he's got that crit online. He's gonna start swinging now, and with that Golden Blade as well, his clear should be very nice and allow him to farm up and try to get a bigger advantage as the skirmish breaks out in mid so Merlin. much damage coming out of jack on the, the emoji pulled in. in silenced and killed by scalping snake just hurt things they're able to come to turn that team fight around get the pick onto the emoji as they now back up right towards his pyramid oh, with a blink in from vicar he's got he's got the advantage he's continuing to chase down the Odin cave is Aiken so Jaxi. good. Jaxi does finish out that kill there, and now the chase is still on, though. Just Kyle not wanting to give up the chase onto Jaxi. He will eventually back up, Her though. The Emoja hits him with, in with the Baba Yaga. Home sweet home lit. forced out as the damage continues to come through onto this Baba Yaga. Going to be in a lot of trouble once that house Jaxi is takes gone. Jaxi takes Kyle as well, but Herc is not going to be able to secure that Baba Yaga. Looking over in this dueling lane, we do see Pusha is often to go into Rage. Might be going a slightly outdated build, or maybe it's a new kind of meta build that he has come up with himself. Having two stacking items makes his build come on extremely slower, but he does not need as much crit to be able to get online as that, as the uh, Ishtar here. It is an interesting decision from uh, Pushka to, to kind of go this build path, but it could if he can if he can get those rage stacks online quickly, it could work out for him in the end. I imagine he's heading into either a demon blade or a deathbringer next after this rage pickup. But he is unfortunately two and a half or so levels down behind what its Charlo has been able to do. 15 to 13 just now ticking over to that 13 mark so definitely on the back foot on this rom as the next gold fury has spawned and it looks like going ghost is starting to set up around it what this rom needs to start doing is grouping up in these team fights to get that rage stacked as much as possible before he starts rotating completely an early spectral armor out of king balrus here on this ganesh will help with the crit that both Ishtar and Vamana have already got online. I like that. Just getting it out of the way early, making sure that you have that extra mitigation against these uh, hard hitting carries on going ghost side as they do pull the gold fury. Cyberpunk otters are aware of it and nearby. Dharma yeah, Killers is up. Days coming in, landing right on the Ishtar. But not getting a whole lot done. Gets stunned out by the Odin. Cage from Kyle is good, as well as River's Rebuke. So many walls here in this area as Colossal Fury is channeled as well. No kills coming from that, but a lot, a lot, a of, lot of alts used by Going Ghost. And Otters still have plenty of their kits to be able to secure this gold here if they decide to go for it as well. We do have the Baba Yaga with ult still. 
being level 12, though. Looks like for now we're still just dancing, trying to vie for position and poke here between these two teams as they both want to be able to secure this Primal Fury for themselves. Good stun onto the Hercules as well as the dash from Ishtar, but it doesn't look like Scalping Snake Mines. He is just walking at these backliners. Meanwhile, the rest of the team are trying to get something done on the other side. Scalping Snake oh, is taking now. quite a bit of damage, but that's the shell forced out by Matt Duck. Uh, trying to keep his carry alive. Dove by four people. We're seeing Charlo doing a good job of avoiding these hurt plucks. Lots of damage going on to the Cyberpunk autos, though. End of days is channeled and will land onto Charlo. Good Aegis to keep him alive for the moment. And now the cage will trap in buffs on the Surter. Health bars are low on both sides. And we do see Pushka get a kill there. One for one so far here in this team fight, but everybody is still low. There's a Dharmic Pillars out from King Balrus. Does get some more damage onto Vicar. And it looks like the fight is heading the way of the Otters. And with another pick onto Charlo there for Pushka, it is indeed going to be going their way. Don't know if they have the health bars to do this Gold Fury. It looks like they're opting to back up. But they end up getting quite a few kills in their pocket. And crucially, that is two rage stacks for Pushka on this ROM, just as we were talking about wanting him to get. That is very true. I'm really hoping to see what this ROM has in store. It looks like he might be going that Demon Blade here as his next item. With those two rage stacks alongside Demon Blade, he should have roughly around 50% crit or more. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's about 55 is indeed that demon 60%. blade there. That'll save him the time of having to go that bladed boomerang, which it, in itself is still a lot better item. But having that 60% crit, being able to rush into Keens and possibly dominance for additional pen, he'll be hitting just as hard as the Ishtar with her Deathbringer. Teleport into the rest of the additional damage. He will indeed. I mean, we were we were talking about the build maybe being suboptimal, but he he ended up getting two kills in that fight, caught up in levels by quite a bit. And here we see Going Ghost pulling this Gold Fury again, Colossal Fury, and End of Days ultimates coming out in so many different areas. The Rivers Rebuke is good with the Odin Case trap. The shell goes out off. Another shell as the damage oh, is coming through. Mad Duck will Jackie. end up falling to Jax. A good pluck back in forces the alt out from Almost Charlo, down to but it's not well. enough. Jaxi getting the double kill here on this Merlin. Can he make it a triple yeah, kill? Mode or Bob goes down to steal Buzz. They take the tower the here. That went Cyberpunk Otter's way a hundred times over. Just cleanly taking that fight a three for none in their favor. That was a good use of uh, ultimates that King Balris, um Dharmic Pillars from the Ganesh did a very good job of slowing down and damaging quite a few members of the team of Going Ghost, and they ended up uh, managing to turn that into a very clean team fight. Definitely. Like I said in the start of this game, they have to play this early game as aggressive and as strong as possible. Coming to that level 5, once they're once the Cyber or not Cyberpunk going Ghost is at level five, it might be a little bit more difficult, but they are playing around each and every one of these ultimates extremely well. They really are. They do manage to secure that even with the blink in from Vicar trying to get the steal onto that Pyromancer. That puts the gold lead at around eight thousand in favor of the Cyberpunk autos. I can't math. Sixty five hundred, still quite a bit here at the twenty minute mark. I'm gonna give them a very good advantage and if another team fight goes their way that cleanly i don't think it'll just be a pyromancer that they'll be able to pick up off the tail end of it it will be a fire giant if i'm going ghost here i'm definitely looking to try to get that shutdown bonus off of that merlin with how they reworked them that might give them enough to get them back into this game here i mean that five and oh giving them an additional 70 percent gold bonus from his death alongside all the additional assists and the XP gain from that death. Right now, the go Cyberpunks don't really seem to be making anything out of these kills, besides on that Ganesh, because they're all about a four-level lead above their lowest player on the Going Ghosts. 
Very true. Does Killing look like them brings them absolutely nothing. But if they can keep shutting down this Ishtar bomb, then they'll be keeping that massive lead they have going on here. Definitely. Now it looks like that we see Buffs is heading the direction you were talking about on the desk, going for that more hybrid style build on this Surtur, picking up that Winged Blade into the Hydra uh, afterwards. Gonna be. Uh, He's going to have that kind of feeling that sometimes warriors that build that way feel where it feels like they do more damage to you and they take less damage than you do when you're backline carry. Might be scary to play into as we see a rotation over here after the tier 1 tower was dropped by going ghost. Blink in from buffs. Not quite going to get the job done for after a good dash from Charlo. Should be able to safely retreat. We even see Vicar stepping up to get some poke damage. Not quite fearing the chase from this cyberpunk team. Yeah. We do have Kurt going to the back line, trying to get anybody in that pluck. He is Gold Fury, not too far off from spawning at the moment, but that is a fully stacked rage for Pushka on this ROM. So he did manage to get it stacked decently quickly, opting into the Deathbringer after that Demon yeah. Blade. So now his crits are gonna be happening uh, very, very often and have that extra damage applied to them as well. This should, this ROM should definitely be swinging. And when he was once almost three levels down, he's now back to a state of even at two, one, and three so far. Definitely an interesting build we have this ROM going here. Ishtar looks to be going into the gold or into the keen size. That's going to be hurting Ice Steel buffs a lot, being building all that HP he has. She is already level 19 coming to this 22, 23 minute mark. Cold Fury has respawned as well. It looks like both teams are favoring this side of the map here. Let's go and ghost. Just kind of poke it right now, trying to bait stuff out. A good pluck onto Matt Duck. Uh, showing that just that Scalping Snake is good at hitting these abilities. He looks like he feels very comfortable on this Hercules. As all five members of the Going Ghost Squad are over here on this left side of the map. Uh, baked Goods just shoving in that mid wave, but should be caught by buffs on the Surter as the dance continues over here. Hercules yeah. is casually diving into the entire back line, not even caring about anything in this world. He really is just searching for this pluck. Hey, Rivers does Rebuke. happen to pull that yim ult. Not quite on the mark there, as it seems like that is the go button yeah, for the otters. Donic coming out as down. well. Rom ult Stopping. down the back as well. Narrowly oh. missing that Odin with his ult. Just because of that shield buff that he gets. Her taking absolutely zero damage from the home sweet home of baked goods he is so tanky right now with the build that he has he does get a pluck on to charlo the dash was good to buy some time here comes end of days from buffs trying to get back into the back line here gets a three-man knockup well placed meanwhile though vicar does turn Here's one around for there. his team but in but snake does turn one around as well buffs very low here and vicar will get another kill back there as matt duck gets credit for the kill onto buffs. As Salvin long as Snake Jack is stays still... alive here, they are not going to be getting back into this game, but it looks like he's going to go down to this Odin and Ababa. Indeed, this is going to be a does. huge turn of events here for this going ghost team, getting that secure bonus on that Merlin there. <laughs> Scalping it's Snake Yager. does not care, forcing out the relics of baked goods, getting that Aegis Odin ult will keep his mid laner alive and for the time being but scalping snake on this hercules is doing absolutely everything he can to make sure the cyberpunk otters hold on to this lead getting that agus there is going to be extremely good for steel buffs coming into that next fight he's going to be able to just dive on that buff but y'all going to take her out instantly but with him opting to go all that additional hp he's going to have an extremely difficult time coming into this late game with all the percentage hp damage that this team could be building. Instead of going Keens, though, the Ishtar does opt to go into Death or into Executioner. 
And we can see that just like so many other times in, in games like this, when fighting just continues for that long, going back and forth, it definitely favors the side that was behind heading into that fight. What was at one point a 6,500 gold lead is now down around 1,000 in favor of the Cyberpunk Otters. So Going Ghost did a very good job of being able to to kind of stem the bleeding there and pull themselves back into this game as the focus now shifts towards the right side of the map and this fire giant. Coming into the next part of the game is going to be extremely interesting to see how it goes. Both teams are not letting up, but we do have going ghosts coming back from their 65k gold lead, like you said, or 6,500 gold lead. Points. Yeah, I'm trying to get some poke there in the back line as well. Mantle of Discord just purchased by Vicar on that Vamana. Going to make him a lot safer now. He has those additional protections. The cooldown is definitely nice as well. And then that passive, being able to stun someone out if he gets in trouble, it's just going to make it so much harder for it to deal with him as he is at that level 20 mark now. Has that Deathbringer as well. He's going to be swinging for a lot of damage. As a good pluck in onto Matt Duck. Doesn't amount to much, but again, it's just showing that you cannot step anywhere near Scalping Snake. He's been hitting these on cooldown and setting up so much for this Otter Squad. Scalping Snake on this Herc, I am expecting to see that respect man coming from this team in the next time. In the next set coming up. Very possible. Focus shifts towards mid here as the wave is shoved under this tier 1 tower. Otters just stepping up to try and see if they can find an opening. Just Kyle's on the side here. Ishtar alt does get some good stuns off as we see Dharma Killers and Rivers Rebuke trapping in this Hercules. He does seem to be fine for the moment, but the Odin Cage on top of it does force the Phantom Shell. Home sweet home pouring damage out as Vicar charges forward on this Colossal Fury. We see Jackson that goes down buffs again. does try to get into the back line with that server not quite working out. As another kill comes through, Charlo getting credit for that kill there on to the support of the Cyberpunk Otters, and that should equate to a tier one tower falling as well. Pushka trying to finish off a kill with that Astral Barrage at the end of that fight there, but none able to do so. And it looks like Going Ghost is just backing up towards this Fire Giant and uh, seeing if they can't just sneak one away here after a, a pretty clean team fight. These fights are definitely going in Going Ghost's favor coming into the late game. That Ishtar is dishing out so much damage alongside that Vamana. And that Odin ult just shut down that hurt, forcing them not to be able to sustain in any of these fights. If they don't pop that Phantom Shell and allow that hurt to get out of that cage, that's just game over for them at that point. Now we saw the power of Rivers Rebuke and the Odin Cage just being laid in back to back there. Stun on to Baked Goods as we see Scalping Snake wrapping around the back. They're both trying to find some way into this Fire Giant pit. The dash out from the Ishtar. It looks like the Fire Giant will be dropped for now, but that is end of days ultimate forced on I Steel buffs and won't have that for any sort of secure or counter engage. Uh, once Going Ghost decide to pull this Fire Giant once again, you see him back. It doesn't look like Going Ghost want to step up uh, quite at this moment. Yeah. I'm going to go for that Pyromancer instead to help push up that gold lead. It should take away that entire difference there. Putting the Going Ghost team in a, a head of that Otter's team right there. Okay. Starters starting to get upgraded here for this Cyberpunk Otter side. And we see uh, it looks like every starter has been upgraded for the Cyberpunk Otters, which is a definite everything except for the ADC. Uh, just having that Gilded Arrow for the moment. But that is a definite advantage for the Otters coming into this team fight. Matt Duck might be a little caught out here, but able to Riptide himself to safety back in with his team. Gonna be even harder to deal with this Hercules now, though, that he has that upgraded Sigil. It's just going to be so tanky and able to just freely walk into the back line just as he's been doing this whole game. 
And it seems like the otters are getting the positional advantage around this fire giant now. Spectral picked up here by just Kyle should help out against the crit that this Rom now has online. He did opt for that dominance there in that last slot. River's Rebuke was used uh, in just a little skirmish around this Pyromancer buff. Won't be available for at least a little while here as the Fire Giant dance continues. Both of these teams are being very methodical and very slow, not wanting to uh, make a mistake that might cost them this entire game. That duck pulled back in again, but once again able to just rip tide to safety. Poke heading in both directions, and <laughs> Scalping Snake just no fear, no worry, continually walking up and trying to find a pluck that could turn the team fight in their favor. He does find one on the Charlo, but opts not to continue too much further as he does get poked out a little bit there. You see Vicar on the side here duking it out with buffs on the Surter, both of them trying to wrap around and gain some sort of advantage for their squad. Now it looks like both teams are just backing up for the moment. I mean, the next fight could have gone absolutely anywhere, but I'm definitely leaning with this going Ghost team, being able to just deal massive amount of damage within seconds, things that old engage, allowing them not to sustain on that Otter's team. Very true. The double pluck and push from this Hercules does get the Dharmic Pillars being used as well as the Herc Boulder. They're really trying to get something going here, but we see that Charlo is here and stepped up, is forced to beads out of the Herc CC, taking quite a bit of damage. End of days getting Hades used, off again. coming down on top of home the Baba Sweet Yaga home who down. home sweet homes to keep themselves safe. Meanwhile, Cage the Odin down Cage on was early. down onto Jaxi here, who's in a bit of trouble, but Jaxie does goes not down, make it out. Kushka turns one around onto Kyle. Here comes another River's Rebuke. As Rom heads up into that Astral Barrage, they do manage to back up for the moment using the safety that that Yemoja is bringing. Another good double pluck from this Hercules leads to a Pushka double kill, though, and the Cyberpunk Otters end up getting a three for one in their favor and only vicar and matt duck left alive for going ghost and they only traded out jaxi for it definitely definitely working out the way that the otters wanted it to go there 100 percent. this otters team is now playing the same way they were at the start of the game getting these kills and securing them is just a big part of this matchup Pushka is now 5, 2, and 4 with this slightly different take on the Hunter build. He's definitely making it work for himself. Curious if it is a Rama-specific build for him or just something that he likes playing, but we can't really deny that it's it's working for him as this Fire Giant is low. We see Vicar stepping up to try and take it, unable to do so. We'll now start to back out on this Colossal Fury, but here it comes. I steal buffs, opting not to chase it out. You got your Fire Giant. It is enhanced. They can back up, spend their gold, and get ready to head on the Siege here 34 minutes into this game. How do you feel about the Siege defense uh, on this going Ghost Squad? With the Ishtar and that ultimate, I feel like they have a decent Siege defense, but the Merlin should be able to poke them down fast and faster than she's able to fucking defend. It's not going to be as easy as going Ghost would want it to be, but they should be able to defend relatively well into this team coming with that fire giant buff very good point they also have that uh the the range of baba yaga should be able to return some of that poke or clear the wave from afar so they definitely have their options here i don't imagine we see them uh do anything more than kind of soft defend these uh these tier two towers there are three so that will slow down the siege potential of the cyberpunk otter squad if they opt to try and sweep the towers but we could see a skirmish here in front of the speed buff just kyle getting caught out a little bit luckily he is a tanky odin dodging that dash from uh snake should buy him 
enough time to get out without issue. They're just stalling out this uh, this fire giant a little bit in the jungle here as the otters finally step up and take that tier two and right. This stuff is going to be slow coming down to this very last fight. The last fight could go any way. If the otters do end up winning the next fight, that will more than likely be game. Just Kyle stepping up and taking a lot of damage for his trouble. Does have that shield, drops the Odin cage, forcing the shell out. As Scalping Snake does get dropped down pretty low. Home Sweet Home and Dharmic Pillars were also used in that engagement there. Couple key ultimates that won't be available if this Otters team decide to siege into this Phoenix here on left. With those old down, I don't think they're gonna be choosing a siege here. They're might just go back to this gold fury burn that and then end up regrouping here for that next fight with fire giant almost being up i think they have about 30 seconds or so left on this fg eating this gold fury will help extend their lead allow them to fully maximize their builds and be able to come back in this next fight at full potential does push the gold lead with that gold fury and those three towers to just about 8,000 in favor of the cyberpunk otters here. We are at the 37 minute mark. It's that gold lead is going to start meaning less and less the longer this game goes on. But for the time being, not everybody's full build yet. So it is still a factor as we head towards what uh, could be the last fire giant uh, dance of this game, depending on how it goes. We see Executioner picked up here as well for this Ishtar, adding it in with that dominance. Sold the starter and imagine we'll be picking up the Demon Blade last there as Exe is picked up on the other side by Pushka as well. Two different takes on this ADC build, but both of them... Uh, you know, we know the the Ishtar build is what is is meta at the moment and does work. And it seems like this Pushka build is working out for in his favor. He's he's still five two and four in this match. Vicar might be caught out here, but should very quick on that Mamana avoids the pluck back from the Hercules as Fire Giant has respawned and is back on the map. The most important neutral objective in the game is up as another Herc pluck forces out the beads of baked goods. Dharmic Pillars was used as well to try and get a pick there at the beginning as Vicar is once again chased out into the mid lane trying to get some angle around the side. Just Kyle could be in a bit of trouble as the flicker in from Jaxi means the go button is here, good to the down. cage, narrowly but just escaped. to get out. He does force the shell end of days yeah, being palm. used as well as the ROM alt home sweet home popped as well. Damage is flying in towards just Kyle who's in a bit of trouble, but Jaxi picks Vickers elsewhere. That is a huge pick for the Cyberpunk Otters not having their Vamana kind of just negates their ability, I would say, to step up to this Fire Giant and have a good chance of stealing. For sure, there's going to be a hard chance for this team coming to that FG. Ishtar alone doesn't have enough secure potential to be able to secure that FG. I'm not sure if Baba Yaga is still alive. She is still up on that Baba Yaga, so they could have easily been able to try to get in there. But it's just the fact that they're going against five people with four, and one of them wasn't there at that time. Yeah, the zone was good from Snake and Buffs as the charge from the Otters is now on. Walking towards this mid lane, stepping up. Will get the pull and the push onto Charlo of this Ishtar, who's forced to dash towards this left lane. Should be able to get out for the time being. Meanwhile, in mid lane, just Kyle forced to jump out as well underneath this Phoenix. The siege it has begun as a bomb drops, and that mid Phoenix was there, and then it was just gone. Odin Cage will allow just Kyle to get a kill on Pushka, which is a very, very good pick for this going ghost squad. They do lose their mid Phoenix, but taking out Pushka on the ROM pretty much just neuters the chances of this uh, Cyberpunk Otter squad of getting more Phoenixes, not having that ADC. One Phoenix for one ADC, I would say, would be relatively good at this point in the game. 40, yeah, 40 worth, minutes worth into it, this worth game. Worth it. 
just getting one Phoenix down at this point in the game is definitely good, at least. It means they're at least going somewhere into this match. Unfortunate that Pushka is the one they lost, though, because I feel like they could have they could have stepped up and tried to got maybe that left side Phoenix to uh, set up for an easy Fire Giant in the next one, as we are 41 minutes into this game now. Taking a look, it looks seems like everybody is full build. Everybody has that upgraded starter. They have their upgraded relics. We are at the point of the game now where gold is not as much of an issue. It will help uh, get those 3k pots, get those power pots, help with the vision, uh, but not as much of an impact as it has in the earlier stages of the game as the Primal Fury does go at the Otter's direction. This becomes a much simpler game now. It's just about who can position better, who has the mechanics and the team fight present to try and get some wins as we see charging forward are the otters here in this left lane. We have a small little skirmish going down the left lane here. Odin's just getting thrown around. Doesn't seem too worked up about it though, not taking a lot of damage. We. Both of these solo laners seem like they just don't take a whole lot of damage from anybody as the Otters are trying to find a way to break this defense here in the left lane. End of days just gets buffs out in time. Vicar was doing so much damage and that is a TKO onto the jungler of this Otter squad which should kind of spell the end of the siege here. Next Fire Giant should be spawning relatively shortly, and that is where both teams will be getting ready to set up and try to get the Fire Giant that might win them the game. Depending on how this next fight goes, if they leave three people alive on either team, they will not be able to end the game. But just getting that Fire Giant will secure them another Phoenix for sure on either of those teams. Definitely, that midbird is exposed on the otter's side of the map, so there is a path there for going ghost to take. If they can get a clean fight here around this fire giant, they still do have those tier twos in either of the side lanes to deal with, but that won't be much of an issue uh, once the sieging starts. Poke damage onto snake here, not gonna amount to anything. He'll be able to heal that up with just one cast of his three. Once again, pulls Matt Duck in, who once again rip tides back to safety. We have seen that so many times so far in this game, and I doubt that will be the last. Otters are backing up to try to secure this FG while Scalpy Snake does try to zone. We do have the entire sack going ghost team surrounding the FG pit. Coming around the back, Lincoln from in. just Kyle, Kyle here. Hold down. Going ghost, going ghost that do FG. get the fire giant. Can they take the fight at the end, though? The damage coming in onto this Hercules, this Colossal Fury is chanted. With but arm buff him does down. take out just Narrowly Kyle. Vicar turning back there. around, though. Jaxie and Pushka falling. Both carries down for the side of the Otters. Meanwhile, it's just Kyle is the one that has fallen for going ghost. Chase is still on here. River's Rebuke used to try and secure this kill onto King Valrus. Luckily, though, Scalping Snake is nearby to help peel for his support. But dropping both carries if you're the Cyberpunk Otters does hinder your ability to uh, sort of defend this siege that will be coming here. We can see the damage that Charlo is able to do onto that. Uh, tower with EFG around his waist. They'll strip that away, back up a bit, and regroup. And I imagine start trying to push down at least one Phoenix. Probably that left side Phoenix would be their top priority here. Though the wave is pushed all the way up in the direction of the going ghost base as we see people diving in. Vicar just absolutely deleting Ice Steel buffs. Darmic Pillars used to try and create some space. King Bowers doing what he can, but Phoenix that mid bird will fall. Only two remaining on the side of the Otters. It seems like Going Ghost is going to take their time, dot those I's, cross those T's, head over here, take out this uh, tier two that's still left in the duo lane before stepping up towards the Phoenix here uh, on this left side.
They will not have a wave coming. It is all the way on the other side of the map. Luckily, this is EFG, so there will be those backdoor protection strips, uh, regardless of the fact if there's a wave or not. Is Charlo gets pushed and pulled, though. Body blocked a bit in there, forced to use both relics to survive. Another good Massive combo. damage coming out of this Scout Merlin here. Snake is doing a great job setting up, and as you said, Merlin is doing so much damage in the back line. Shell popped damage, but won't be enough onto... Pushka on secures Q. baked good kills. Snake and Pushka does get that kill there. Baked goods falling. And the bird still stands. Low health bars across the board for going ghost and a successful defense by the Cyberpunk Otters. Pony Fury is a good pickup, though. Uh, will be a good pickup, assuming that going ghost don't get this taken away by Jaxi. They will not. We'll pick up that Oni Fury, so they will have Oni Fire Waves in that mid lane. Will be matched by regular Fire Waves. Uh, coming from the other direction, but we'll just give them a little bit extra pressure uh, in all three lanes, give them a chance to back up, buy up some wards, buy some 3k pots, and get ready for yet another fire giant dance here between these two squads. Now that we're at pretty much a state of even uh, here in this match, are you still favoring this going ghost squad for uh, being able to win this next team fight and try to put the game uh, to bed? It is very tough to say here. It could go either way with this FG, but with how the going ghost team is playing, I am still going to end up favoring them here. They're dishing out a lot of damage with that Ishtar and Baba Yaga, but at the same time, the Rama and the Burnland are dishing out the same amount in these team fights. So it could really just go either way in this matchup right here. I it really are. This final fight. Merlin has a uh, quite the damage lead, almost 10k above second place, which is Charlo's Ishtar. Uh, to me, though, it's gonna, it's definitely gonna be down to if Scalping Snake can continue to hit these incredible Earthbreakers uh, and just set up for his team. He has been hitting them on cooldown plucking in Charlo or any number of going ghost members. And it's just going to take one. If he can pull the right person at the right time, it will completely swing the team fight in the favor of the cyberpunk otters and turn this around. That is the beads forced out from Vicar by scalping snake, as I was mentioning him. So that is a level of safety that will not be afforded to Vicar. As we continue to dance around this fire giant, we can see Baba Yaga baked goods there in the middle, just shoving that fire wave forward to try and get some pressure as their mid Phoenix has respawned, which gives them a slight advantage uh, in this fire giant dance. River's Rebuke used to try and trap in Snake, who does pop that shell to try and get out, but is immediately stopped by the Odin Cage. Rom snipes are good for the moment. The Phoenix Vicar for the down. Otters have, has respawned, but Vicar does end up falling to Pushka. End of days is channeled and all of that aggressive. He will land on to Charlo down. for he good does. relics for the moment, but look at the he damage that lives. Charlo has. Kyle. Kyle does secure that kill. We see low health bars from every single Cyberpunk member here. Just need to get a few more autos. Charlo not quite able to put Snake to bed. Kyle in a lot of trouble too. That should spell the end of Balrus, and it does. But Jaxi turns one back around before Baked Goods get the double kill. It's just Pushka left alive for this Cyberpunk Otter squad. And we see Going Ghost stepping up. They'll take that mid Phoenix. And it's Pushka versus the world. Can he stop this end by Going Ghost? Ishtar's going to be doing a lot of damage as is Bobby Yaga to this Titan. Matt Duck tanking it up as much as he can. He's getting poked out, though. He's low, and Charlo is low. Charlo. Pushko does get the kill onto Charlo there and is turning the kill onto Baked Goods as well. Very, very close, but he has that benefit of being able to step into his fountain. Now it is all He does have his ult up here in only 10 seconds. He, he has is... his ult up, secures <laughs> Baked Goods as well. Pushka with an what incredible defense. Solo on his own stops three from stepping into the Titan room 
and extends this game 50 minutes and we are, could just be getting warmed up here these teams are going back and forth so evenly fire giant is still up nobody ended up securing that mid phoenix does go down for the otters but pushka with an insane defense What do you want to see differently out of this Otter squad uh, in these team fights, so it doesn't have to come down to Pushka on a on a uh, Titan defense like that every time? I think you start playing a little bit more passive and try to get as many abilities out of this of the enemy team's kit as possible here. That Odin ult is just making a mess of the Otter's team alongside that Yem. Fire Giant's extremely low already, being burnt down very quickly by the crit, but Vicar deals Vicar with Pushka. Pushka. That is a good pick from the jungler of this going ghost squad. Fire Giant still has not been leashed yet. River's Rebuke thrown out as the Ishtar ults come, or autos come firing through, and going ghost will get that enhanced Fire Giant. End of days used merely to retreat there. As with Pushka down, the, these cyberpunk otters do not favor their chances in a team fight. All the while, Winions are getting some work done onto that Titan back there. But advantage going Ghost once again as they set up to try and work down this right side bird, getting the wave pushed up. They do also have the wave pushed up in left, which is fortunate for them. As they begin this siege once more, they can just take their time and wait for those fire minions to push in mid. This could very well be the end of the game here. They get one more Phoenix, and it's just as good as game over with that enhanced EFG. An all-important fight for the Cyberpunk Otters coming up. Darmic Pillars to start things off, trying that to get Phoenix some damage onto now. it, but the Phoenix just evaporated. It is no more. Odin Cage traps in two, three as the Ganesh dives in. Merlin living with a sliver of HP and will end up falling as well as Balrus and buffs also fall. That is definitely just has to be the game here. Home sweet home dealing damage in the fountain. Titan Push at half HP. Down. It should just be over and it is going ghost after 53 minutes do end up taking game number one here between these two squads. What a match. That was an endurance match and a half. Ended up going the way of going ghost. Lots of patience required from both teams to make it to that point. Take a look at the damage numbers. Vicar with 39k. Baked goods with 44, but Charlo... Jaxi over there with 50. Oh, I didn't even see that. Jaxi, 58, top of the lobby. This, I mean, it didn't end up working for the game win, but Jaxi was pumping out damage on that Merlin. That was one rough match coming in for those Cyberpunk Otters. They had the entire early game going for them, but coming into that late game, they just fell short. What a defense from Pushka to try and extend that game for them there as we get ready to head to game number two. We'll be right back after a quick break. You definitely don't want to go anywhere if we're going to continue to have defenses like that. So make sure you stay tuned.
After a barn burner of a first game, we are back with game number two between the Cyberpunk Otters and Going Ghost Merlin Division. Getting ready to head into picks and bans. How are you feeling about game number two, Cthulhu? Game number two, after seeing that first game, it could go either way. Both teams played it extremely well up until that end game. We, I'm really leaning towards the Going Ghost team coming into this round two, though. They do have all the momentum after winning that 53-minute first game. As the bands come through, they're exactly the same as they were in the first game. We have Marty and Thor taken away on one side, while Going Ghost taking away that Bakasura and the Habwa. I wonder if they're going to go with the, the five jungle bands once again, trying to get buffs on the back foot as the Terra comes through for the Otters on the other side. Starting off with the, pretty much just the same bands in a different order. Going Ghost does have another band to be able to use here, though. I feel with like Otters the... Taking, with the Sorry. Taking that Thor. Yeah, they, they do. That is, that is uh, on the other side. It's on... I would say it's on the Otters. Like, they have the... They are the ones who are going to need to switch things up here in picks and bands because it went going ghost's favor in game number one so they could they're not the ones that need to change to try and turn this match around taking their time trying to figure out what to ban last there and it will be the susano before the insta lock-in of the mana making sure that vicar does not get that pick again because he looked so good on it and we're just getting a bit of a flip from last time now it's hercules and merlin getting picked up on going ghost side instead of the otters should uh be a good pickup for baked goods that i mean jaxi did so much damage on that merlin in game one so it's a good pickup there in the mid lane and if this Ishtar gets locked in, we could have the same top four picks just reversed on what team they are going for here. As they are hovering it, thinking about picking that up for Pushka, who looked very solid on that ROM, and I imagine will be able to play the Ishtar to the same level. They will all obey their goddess. Guan Yu locked in for the solo laner of Scalping Snakes now that he does not have access to that Hercules once that sustain that Guan Yu can bring as well as the engage from that cavalry charge should be a good tool for the Otters trying to turn this set back around in their favor. Uh, how, are you, uh, how are you liking the draft so far between these two teams? Definitely a solid draft, but I am leaning towards that going ghost team. 
yet again. Simply because of the amount of pressure they're bringing into the early game and the late game so far with those two picks. The double crit potential on the side of the Otters is definitely going to be something to uh, keep an eye out for. We just saw Charlo and Vicar pilot Vamana Ishtar to a very high level, so I assume that Pushka and Buffs will be trying to do the same thing for their own team oh, as yeah. the Maui They've is locked no in for Matt now, Duck brother. ongoing Ghost. Super strong support there uh, that they can use in their dual lane. Uh, I, I personally, I think Maui's in a very good spot. I feel like he brings a lot. Landfall is such a big ultimate in these team fights. Uh, a good pickup for going Ghost. Definitely liking the going Ghost draft here with that Maui and all the heavy amounts of CC they're carrying. See an Agni ban by going Ghost, not opting to only ban out buffs this time taking away something from jaxi as he's yet to put a pick in on the other side the otters take away that mercury not wanting to give another one of those crit auto attack focused junglers to vicar uh the the kali is still available if vicar wanted to head that direction um so he does still have options if that's the way he wants to head as Morgan Le Fay gets banned by Going Ghost. It will be the ROM ban by Cyberpunk Otters. They have that Ishtar already, so taking away the other sort of high-pressure uh, late-game crit hunter with the, the Marty band as well. Charla will have to dig just a little bit deeper into his god pool to get something uh, locked in right here. Going Ghost with the next pick will hover the Jingwei. Very safe pick with uh, just insane crit uh, using that second ability to buff her damage. Uh, very good uh, pick up here and with that Maui at her side she would be Charla would be very this safe in that dual lane. Otter's still needing a mid laner and a support. Is there anything that jumps out to you uh, that you feel like they should be trying to pick up here? I would definitely like to see that Ganesh again, for sure. He did play it extremely well, and that does offer more safety for that Ishtar in that duo. You lane. Shall not the Yannis pick, I Do would not points. really like to see here. He does not deal as much damage as some of the other mid laners in this game, though. Giannis bringing that extra layer of utility, though, with that uh, ultimate able to just kind of move his team around the map as they see fit. When you have a Vamana and you have a Guan Yu, they are already going to be diving into that backline. You give them the ability to portal through walls. Could be uh, some scary rotations coming out once that level 5 mark is hit there in the mid lane. You'll have to see how Jaxi opts to pilot it. That is very true as well. Still needing a support. I agree. I think the Ganesh would be a very good pickup. Um, Balris is comfortable on that. We saw how how well how well he played it in that last game. He had some very good Dharma pillars trying to split up those fights. So I would have no problem with him picking that back up. But it will be the Athena instead, which. It gives a good amount of peel to that Ishtar, kind of makes sure that Pushka feels safe there in the back line. Not a bad pickup, in my opinion, for uh, for this Otter squad. With the Nemesis being hovered over, this is definitely going to be a very interesting matchup coming into this game. Do you imagine we would see a auto... Well, there goes my question. As the Kali gets locked in, I assume this will be an auto attack Kali build with how good crit is and how good she is uh, with those sort of... It almost feels like chainsaw pace when she gets into that late game. We could see the ability-focused Kali with that kind of one-shot potential, but I imagine that Vicar will continue to go that auto attack focus.
Now that we can see all five picks on either side, are you still leaning in the direction of going ghost to take game number two here? With going ghost out on that hyper carry out of that Kali and the high crit damage from that Jingwei on top of the Merlin, they have a lot of damage output and a lot of heavy CC going into that Otter's team. I am still going to be leaning towards this going ghost team. I, I mean, here you have you make a good point. Kali, Jingwei, and Merlin can all pump out so much damage, and Maui Hercules is a very staunch front line. It's going to be a lot for the Otters to try and fight their way back into this set as they need this Game 2 victory to push us to a Game 3. I feel like they do have the tools, though. I mean, Athena Guan Yu is a very good front line as well with so much setup for the damage that Ishtar and Vimana can bring with that crit. And Giannis, as we said, just able to push the team around and allow them to rotate very, very easily and nicely. Um, it will definitely be interesting to see if the Otters can uh, fight their way back into this one. When it comes to the dual lane, Maui Jingwei versus Athena Ishtar, I would imagine pressure will go the way of Athena Ishtar uh, in the early game. Jingwei not known for her pressure, just kind of the opposite, very safe um, with her ultimate and her dashes and the passive allowing her to get back into lane. So I would you would you say that dual lane uh, early game is going to be won by the Otters here? Definitely, the otters will be able to out clear and out pressure that early game comp that the that the going ghost has. Coming to the late game, Jingwei should be able to do more damage though, and I'm pretty sure that's what they're hoping for there. Yeah, it definitely seems like going ghost has very much drafted for that late game. Jingwei, Kali, and Merlin all what I would call late game gods. Um, Urk brings that pressure early, but that. You, can't really completely play through solo like that so it looks like based off how long game number one went going ghost is just deciding that hey if it's going to go that long if we're going to keep playing 50 minute games we're just going to win in the late game because we have the draft for it does look like jaxi is going for that traditional Giannis build that's different than uh the rest of the builds that most of these mid laners going picking up that conduit gem and probably going to head into that chronos pendant first item to give himself that extra cooldown and the power that will help his clear from the conduit gem do you like that kind of style build on a Giannis? he's able to he has single hit ability targets most of the time not really aoe type and getting that additional, when it's maxed out 1.2%, I think, scaling as well. Other max HP out of that Conduit Gem, he's going to be hitting a lot harder than that Merlin late game per ability. I agree wholeheartedly as it's a hook from Matt Duck there. Just pulling in Balrus a little bit. Wasn't quite able to pull him under tower, uh, but... I like the intention that we're seeing out of him. Should see some more poke damage heading the way of uh, this um, brain completely shut off there. Going the way of this going ghost squad, though, with the Ishtar pressure that should have in a moment. But it seems like there could be a bit of aggression towards Pushka on this Ishtar as we see Balrus head over to just try and ward out. And he does catch Vicar on this call. He does see him on that rotation over there, which means nothing will come of that early rotation towards this duo side. We shift our focus over to mid for the time being. We have a blink in from Vicar on the Kali, doing a lot of damage onto this Giannis, who is safe with the portals, but might not have the chance to get to one. One more auto needed, but not going to find it. The portal finally did come back up in time. 
Vicar just barely unable to get first blood there in mid. Giannis could not have lived with more than like 50 HP at the max. That duck wrapping around the back here does get the stun onto Pushka on the Ishtar, but not opting to go for the hook. Just getting a little poke damage done, but that initial gank onto Jaxi will set him back a bit. He's now forced to play under tower uh, because of all the poke damage he took. Might have to back early. It looks like he is. Vickers using that pressure to steal away this green buff and start to try and pull a lead uh, in that jungle roll. Opting for further invades, even taking away these treasure minions uh, on this side as well. No contest. I don't think they even know he was there. That gank, though, did give uh, buffs the time to kind of focus on his farm. It seems like that's what he's doing. He's already level 5, has a I would say probably a level and a half lead over Vickers Kali, which makes sense. Kali definitely not known for her early game where Vamana can bring a lot more a lot sooner. So I'd like to see him get active here soon while Vicker is going to have to start just focusing on farm and trying to get to that uh, later game quicker. Damage coming in onto Matt Duck, but he should be fine for the moment. Taking a look at some of the builds, it looks like Vital Amplifier is going to be the first item picked up by Scalping Snake on this Guan Yu. Do you feel like that's a good uh, first item for a Guan Yu in the solo lane? Vital Amplifier. Nope, I don't really think that would be as strong as it would be on maybe like a Hurt. But maybe I'll be proven wrong, and it might actually be a very solid pickup here. I think it's a. I, I don't mind it picked up on a Guan Yu in general. I just am curious about it being the uh, the first choice. Uh, to me, that's more of like a third, a second or third item pickup. Uh, but we'll have to see how it works out for him. We do see both of these hunters uh, continuing on the build talk have went for that Gilded Arrow. But uh, what I'm interested in is if Pushka is going to decide to go into that Devo's Gauntlet once again as Cavalry Charge and Defender of Olympus are channeled here onto this Hercules. Just Kyle in a lot of trouble, but a good pushback will get him out safely as the second time a First Blood has just barely not gotten secured in this game five minutes in and still deathless. Matt Duck making the rotation over towards Pushka here, who did see it coming, able to dash away from that stun that would have landed on top of his head. So still, both both these teams are playing very safe at the moment. Nobody, uh, nobody diving too extra hard to try and get one of these kills. And after how long game one went, they, I think they both are of the mindset that they you know this is an endurance match they seem very evenly uh matched up against each other and neither one wants to be the one to make that mistake opting not to finish the purple buff instead going for the chase as the rotation is here on to matt dunk who can solar leap away to safety purple buff still not finished up as they i thought maybe for a second we might see them try to pull a six minute gold fury but deciding against that, just returning back to a state of farming. A new fresh Pushka does decide to pick up that Devo's Gauntlet, so that doesn't seem to be a ROM-specific build. It might just be a Pushka-specific build. It ended up working out pretty well for him last time. Now that we know where he likes to go with the build, uh, with this Devo start, how do you feel about his build path? Definitely a little bit weird to see that being built, but if it works, it works. It definitely showed itself in that last game. 
he was melting everyone that he could see in his path. And it's a seems to be really strong compared to the current build that we have the ADC building. Definitely is a lot different as the junglers skirmish here by the blue buff and Kali doing a lot of damage already. Does up down, but the dash from buffs is good. Hurt Boulder just off the mark, but Colossal Fury used just in case, making sure he doesn't drop there. Calvary Charge will be used as an escape tool. So three ultimates uh, used there in that little skirmish around a blue buff that wasn't even up yet. As Jingwei heads up into her own alt, Defender of Olympus channeled, but the fight was done before this Athena was able to get there. Through time and space does clip baked goods, but not quite enough damage to get the kill. Does force the back, though, as a skirmish continues here in the dual lane. Just getting some poke is Pushka onto this Jingwei. Matt Duck should be fairly safe just backing up. Lots of just small skirmishes poking, trying to see if they can catch out a slip up from the other team. But so far, nothing coming of it. We are now eight minutes into the game without a single kill thus far. Seems like both teams are definitely taking the easy route here, just trying to play it as safe as possible. We have the Doom Orb pickup for the Merlin first item here. That was the sort of go-to choice for a while, but it's kind of shifted towards picking up Devil's Gauntlet. Uh, not Devil's Gauntlet, excuse me. Uh, Spear of Desolation in that first slot. Only really getting Doom Orb on the characters that had liked it before. Uh, Merlin, to me, doesn't scream Doom Orb, but 140 power, some movement speed. It's kind of hard to... Uh, you know, not want, not like the stats that you get from it. Do you like this pickup uh, first by the by baked goods? Yeah, getting that additional eight percent pen, the one forty power, and just so much for that stats for what it is. It's a really good pickup right now for any mid laner, besides maybe Baba Yaga at the start. Does look like both mids are heading into that spear tree as a, another small skirmish breaks out here over this silver buff on the left side. The blink in is good, but Defender of Olympus might be better with Colossal Fury. Destruction Ultimate does keep Vicar alive for the time being. Landfall does knock up a couple, but Buffs gets that first blood on this Vamana and might be able to turn another one around as well. Matt Duck trying to use Solar Leap to get out safely does land the stun. But Jaxi is there on the Giannis, making that rotation with that extra mobility that he has and will pick up a kill for his troubles. Ten minutes with nothing, we finally get two kills in favor of the Cyberpunk Otters. Sekhmet Scepter is the call. I That makes so much more sense uh, to me now that I, that I feel about it. It's such a good item on Guan Yu, just giving... That cooldown every time he smashes that heal is just going to bring so much uh, for him and his allies there in in these team fights. Do you like that pickup for uh, for Snake? Now that one I definitely do like. Segments is extremely good on Guan. Very much so. As it looks like we might have headed into a brief pause here between these two teams. Uh, Wanting to make sure that everything's good uh, for all 10 players here in this match before we continue. Gives us a chance to look at some of the builds here. Uh, we can see that buffs ended up going from Golden Blade into that hastened katana. So it's going to be very hard to run away from him once he starts autoing you down. Or on the other side, it looks like Vicar is opting for that double uh speed clear getting golden blade and that tier two of odysseus bow charged bow i think is the name of it uh which will just make his clear speed so quick but doesn't quite bring as much damage into team fights do you like this sort of farming focused uh start for vicar on the cali for Kali, i myself don't really like just focusing on farm but at the same time Kali has very little early game presence, and especially with the build he's going, going to that charged bow and the golden blade, he's not going to be doing any damage to anyone. 
So I don't think it really has a choice but to go that farming route at this point. Yeah, I agree. It's definitely, I mean, based with how they draft it and how both teams are playing this game, I think I think both squads are expecting this to go long again. So just trying to opt into that uh, play style and a build path that will lend itself to taking it into that late game. Uh, we'll have to see if it works out in going Ghost's favor and they can take this 2-0 set or if the Cyberpunk Otters will push us to a game three but we're going to take a quick break while we get this pause taken care of and we'll be back in just a few moments taken care of right back into the slow methodical farming action of this game so far on the break i noticed that matt duck has picked up that prophetic cloak and is heading into what i assume will be a spirit robe second item uh getting a lot of protections and mitigation on very quickly should make him quite tanky here even in the early game especially if he picks up that spectral in the third slot uh, this Maui could be difficult to deal with. We do also see the Rage once again picked up by Pushka, this time on the Ishtar. So it seems like he has a build path that he likes and he's sticking to it. As the Gold Fury is pulled by Going Ghost here, Doesn't it does look like 
that the cyberpunk otters are aware of it. This Vamana of buffs is nearby. Blink in as well as the Defender of Olympus. The otters do end up taking that gold fury and get a kill onto baked goods. King Balris getting credit for that one as Matt Duck barely made it out uh, and Vicar did as well. Cavalry Charge getting used as well onto this Hercules. Just Kyle in a lot of trouble under this tier one with a full five man dive on top of him. Buying a lot of time, but will end up falling to Jaxi. Going Ghost wanted that fight. They wanted that Gold Fury and end up losing the Fury, losing two different members, and will end up losing the Pyromancer at the same time. That's a big gold swing, pushing it up to 2,000 in the favor of the Cyberpunk Otters, who came back from that pause and just decided that the slow gameplay was not what they were looking for anymore. I do like the aggressive switch up for these otters. They know they have an aggressive early game and they just want to abuse it. And it is working out for them, or at least it did in that beginning bit there. Uh, as the tier one tower does fall for in favor of going ghost to kind of turn that gold lead back around uh, more to a state of even. But Definitely, it seems like the Otters might be in the driver's seat now after that skirmish around the Gold Fury. Mad Duck steps up and does get a hook off, but gets immediately confounded, so not much coming from that there. Taking a look at the solo lane builds for a quick moment, we have Breastplate of Regrowth into what I imagine will be a Genji's Guard for just Kyle on this Hercules. Pretty standard build there, and then we have Regrowth picked up as well for scalping snake really leaning into that uh healing that uh conviction that guan yu has uh on in his kit uh is what i'm trying to say and uh i feel like that i feel like this is a good a good build path when i thought it was vital amplifier i was not convinced but now knowing that it's sekmets into breastplate of regrowth i feel like this is a very good build for the guan yu Both teams returning once again to farming. We might have a little skirmish around the silver buff here on the left side. We do see rotations coming through by going ghost. Baked Goods was making his way over. It doesn't look like it will amount to anything too much. I steal buffs trying to do his namesake and steal the purple buff, but just slightly off the mark there it is secured, and Charlo manages to pick that up. But now a fight breaks out as well confound just short through space and time was used as well really trusting in king valris to land that taunt not quite happening though which does mean that is a big ultimate down uh, by jax he won't have that available for a while he does have that chronos pendant and that spear of desolation though 30 percent cooldown he should get that back relatively quickly Otters definitely kicking it into a higher gear of play, uh, rotating around this map, trying to find picks wherever they can, feeling like they have the advantage here in this mid game before this colleague gets online, still sitting on just the Golden Blade charged bow. And now, as I say, that does pick up the chin size, which will definitely increase her, uh, the damage potential that Vicar has. Do you think that Vicar is going to end up going crit here in this build, or are we going to see a full pin build out of this Kali? With all the auto attack based characters currently, crit is just the meta, so if he doesn't go crit with that full bend build, he's not going to be doing as much damage as he should be. So I really hope he's going to be going that crit path. I have to say I agree with you. Crit is just in such a good spot. He's just opting to pick it up a bit later, it would seem. Again, still focusing on just trying to farm up for the moment. But he's unfortunately two levels behind buffs on this Vamana, who's been able to get in and have participation in four kills so far, with Vicar having fallen once. 
as both teams are here on this left side of the map. Both solo laners have rotated over, which tells me that we will have a Gold Fury fight here in just a few moments as the teams kind of try to set up. We get some positional advantage. We see the skirmish just now starting to begin. Pull was just off the mark from just Kyle there as uh, Snake does wrap around the side trying to get some poke damage onto these backliners. Neither team wanting to fully engage at the moment as Buffs uh, sits back and takes that purple buff. He's coming in around the back of this team fight. Pings are coming out. They know he's there though as both of these solo laners continue to just du duke it out here in the Oracle Pit. Neither team wanting to fully commit to a fight just yet, but I Steel Buffs is still just sitting in that back lane, waiting for his moment to come forward, and he decides that moment is now. Good knockup, does a ton of damage, but Vicar turns around a kill onto Pushka. The chase is on, though, for the Cyberpunk Otter Squad. Vicar does get a kill onto Baked Goods, as this Kali is not done yet, jumping in, getting the good stun, but the portal is better from Jaxi. Yana so safe. Beads are forced on the Guan Yu, and it looks like the otters are deciding it is time to retreat. Once again, the portals allowing Jaxi to safely get away for the time being, but that has opened the door for Going Ghost to pull this Primal Fury ended up working out in their favor there we do have the blink forward and the portal from jaxi very aggressive the otters do manage to secure that pyromancer or that primal fury though landfall used to help in that securing of it a very aggressive play from jaxi there to try and get in and turn that in their favor uh i would definitely say that uh as you said this otter squad is uh turning up the pace and hitting the gas pedal Gold lead now about 2,800 in favor of the Cyberpunk Otters. This this faster paced uh, style of play is working out in their favor. Which uh, we, we look at, I'm looking back at the build for Vicar again, and that is once again not going into the crit tree at all. This could be a hastened katana or a serrated edge uh, coming out next for Vicar. So it seems like there's a chance he might not end up going into crit. He could still pick it up last item and sell that charged bow for a Deathbringer as we got on later, but not wanting to pick up the crit at all so far. And neither is buffs on the Vimana. Neither one of these auto attack focused junglers deciding to go for the crit in the slightest. How? I mean, I know you said you liked that crit option. Do you feel like there is a world where this sort of pen style build could still be good on the Kali at this point in time no the Vamana has so many more options than this Kali being able to build defenses and gain additional power which he is opting to do this game alongside that eye of the jungle he's probably going to have roughly about 200 physical defense and magical defense so he won't really need to be going that crit as much as the Kali would to be able to do a massive amount of damage. Very true. He'll have that additional survivability now that he has that mantle of discord picked up again for the Vamana of I Steel buffs. It's, it is very interesting to me that we don't see Vicar picking up the crit. I mean, he was on the Vamana last game. He did pick up crit. Uh, and it's just in such a good spot. It's a little perplexing that he's not opting to go that route, though. This Merlin is going to start swinging, though, in a moment. But uh, that thought will get interrupted as Buffs is here taking the uh, 1v1 against Charlo, who does end up getting forced to use that ultimate to get to safety. Buffs not done yet, though. Stepping up behind this tier one just trying to see if charlo was backing in a place that wasn't very safe luckily though charlo does make it back to base and uses that jingwei passive to already make it back here but buffs is here just to be annoying buying so much space for his team to take out this tier one tower and really nothing that charlo could do there well played by the going ghost squad 
blink in from just Kyle, though. The pull does force the beads off of uh, Jaxi. Boulder coming out as well. Does get the kill. He was very low because of Vickers Kali getting in the back there. Boulder does secure that and a good two-man pluck from Kyle as well. This Hercules has shown up and is making a difference here in these fights. Gets the push as well onto the Athena of King Balrus, who will be able to get out. Does end up using that meditation to uh, root the enemy team there with that upgraded relic. But the Gold Fury is just about to spawn. It will be an Oni Fury. And Going Ghost is already set up and in a good position to pull this one. You know, I've never noticed that those pits above Gold Fury were filled with gold until today. <laughs> that, that, that is a good point. Makes sense. Gold Fury likes the gold. Good, uh, good thematic design there by High Res in that Gold Fury pit. The uh, Going Ghost Squad not opting to pull that Oni Fury right away as there were a few members of the Cyberpunk Otters nearby to try and contest it. Instead, it looks like Kyle is just walking down mid lane at three members without a fear in the world. Shows just how strong Hercules is in uh, right now. Buying so much space and time for the rest of his team to back and spend their gold and step up towards what will be a fairly important Oni Fury fight here. Through space and time is used. Looks like it did clip Mad uh, Matt Duck there and force a back out of him, but not too much else coming out of it. As Defender of Olympus was charged elsewhere as well, we see Snake charging forward on this Guan Yu and will use the Cavalry charge at the same time to buy even more space, turning around onto Snake on this Hercules, who is taking a bit of damage from these crits from Ishtar. The blades are out and do get a double stun, forcing the jump back. But no real threat of a kill quite yet from either side. Both teams just poking, trying to find a weak point in this opposing squad. This is quite an extended Oni Fury dance that we're seeing so far. Reminiscent of game one with how careful these teams are being in these objective fights. Destruction Ultimate very well timed though to make sure that Vicar does live. But meanwhile, I Steal Buffs gets a kill onto Baked Goods, gets the double kill, dropping Charlo, or Charlo falling as well. And Buffs not done yet, has two low health members there back uh, between the Tier 2 and Phoenix. Won't be able to confirm those, but bought more than enough space for the Otters to be able to pull this Oni Fury. With what you were saying with this uh, Kali build, so far Vickers pretty down uh, there on the player damage charts 25 minutes into this game. Do you feel like he's bringing enough with this different style build to really impact these fights? He definitely isn't bringing enough damage. We can see it here. He, in those few autos that he did on that Athena, he should have already killed her within three if he was building correctly. He does manage to get the kill though, which is which is something, but then immediately falls to Pushka. Calvary charge used to stun out Matt Duck here as through space and time was used as well. Ishtar alt does get the stun onto Matt Duck, but this Maui is tanky and is not taking a whole lot of damage from all that was used on him. But meanwhile, Jaxi gets the kill onto Baked Goods, dropping the Merlin down again baked goods now oh four and one so far he's picked up that staff of myriad in this production showed us and he has that uh uh rata tahuti as well so his damage should be doing okay but how do you feel about uh staff of myriad and on merlin as this fire giant is pretty much a foregone conclusion uh in favor of the otters that staff of myriad on merlin is definitely a good pickup he has it up every 40 seconds and he's able to spam it every 40 seconds with that Merlin pass, with that Merlin stance switch. And it also took a good amount of damage boost without having to hit the target like he would with, uh, what's that one item? 
tier two tower does end up falling in favor though and a good through space and time from jax he drops vicar into the ground charging forward still is the cyberpunk otter squad they are definitely on the the front foot here but a great landfall pulls in king balrus and baked goods finally getting a kill here in this game so far taking out the support taking that fire giant buff off his waist will slow down the cyberpunk otters uh siege a bit they should still be able to get this tier two without any issue but a good pick uh set up by matt duck there to try and hold back what the otters are trying to do on the siege As they step back here and take this Pyromancer and back to spend up that gold. Taking a look at what Going Ghost has, how do you feel about their uh, Siege defense? Being able to pick up that Ganesh kill definitely helped them a lot. Their Siege defense was alright. And it's mostly thanks to the Merlin and the Jingwei being able to spam those abilities and autos on the back line. They're doing pretty good coming into the late game and defending against these otter against the otters team here that was what we were talking about during picks and bands in the early game here that going ghost has drafted very much more focused onto the late game well 28 minutes in we have officially made it to said late game almost everybody level 20 here in the lobby starting to work on those final items getting towards the point where uh, the one-shot potential from this Kali is very real, who did pick up that Hasten Katana and is now heading into the uh, Penetration Tree once again, has that uh, second tier of the Light Blade online, but the aggression is happening, turning into Matt Duck here, who will Solar Leap to safety, but he took a lot of damage there, which kind of just shows where this cyberpunk otters team is they are around 8,000 gold in the lead so far and you can feel it in these team fights tier two and left a foregone conclusion as they drop that one as well we do see the standard build out of charlo here getting the crit which could be why vicar is opting not to get the crit they have someone with crit he might want a different approach different type of damage coming through could be their their game plan their decision making um not quite working out for them yet but this kali is level 20 now so it could start turning around uh and pumping out crazy high damage numbers And as we get ready for the second fire giant of the game to spawn, it will be enhanced. So very important pick up here for either squad to get. How do you favor um, going ghost odds to be able to step up and fight into this fire giant pit when they're down this much gold? I think they have a pretty good shot at being able to defend this. As long as they play it safe and slow going into this fight, they have a really good chance at being able to secure and defend this fire giant on their own. They are 10k down, but they do have quite a bit of steel potential on their side, as well as the ability to try and just win the fight uh, while Cyberpunk Otters are pulling it. It is on the Otters here to sort of decide how this fight is going to go, if they're going to pull the fire giant and try to bait forward going ghost or if they're going to get aggressive and step up into the team as cavalry charge is used here by snake get charging into the back line and getting some damage in onto the merlin who does make it safely away meanwhile a skirmish happening here on the left side kali using those chainsaw autos and the destruction ultimate to get back in onto the ishtar victor does Vicar does get that kill there, but could be in a lot of danger. The Athena dash plus confound means that buffs will get that kill, trading out one for one so far here in this team fight. Through space and time is used to try and get towards the back line, and Jaxi will drop baked goods again here. Merlin falling for the fifth time this match as Jaxi gets a double kill onto Charlo. Matt Duck very low as well, but 
just Kyle got into the back line and will at least turn around another kill there as Jaxie uh, drops this Maui. It's now Hercules versus the world. A four for two trade in favor of the otter, the otters, getting some damage on to just Kyle, but he's not taking very much, and he's actually turning this around a three v one, and he did quite a bit of damage to this Giannis. Won't be able to secure the kill, but is definitely slowing down anything that the otters would want to do with that very close to deicide there and since they lost vicar and charlo no real threat of being able to do that fire giant going ghosted just enough to extend this game that does help them a lot as they are still 11k or so down right around ten and a half thousand. But the longer this goes on, the less that means. And so if they can continue to just do fights like that to try and extend the game further, it's going to continue to help outgoing Ghost and allow them a way back into this game uh, as time goes on. What uh, what would you say that, that the uh, the Otters did... I mean, they got four kills there, but they weren't able to do anything from it. What would you want to see them switch up to try and be able to use that team fight win to more of an advantage in the future? I don't really think there's anything they could do after losing their ADC and only having their mid laner left. Two tanks and the mid laner, there's not really too much they can really secure on the map. But if they're able to keep that ADC alive in favor of sacrificing the mid or even the jungler, they could have easily pushed down some towers there, taken the, any objective, the Gold Fury, Pyro, or even that Fire Giant. I steal buffs in the middle of three here using that Colossal Fury, but through Space and Time and Defender of Olympus are channeled to try and get that jungler out. He will safely make it into this mid lane. And it now it is the go button for the Cyberpunk Otters who deal so much damage to just Kyle, who seemed almost unkillable earlier, and now just disappears. The door was opened, and the Otters say thank you very much, stepping through into this right side Phoenix already. The aggressive ult in by Charlo, trying to help deal some damage and buy some space, but takes so much damage, is forced to back immediately. That right side bird has a sliver of HP left, but is still alive, which is important if you're going ghost here, as the wave is nowhere to be found. It is EFG, so that will help, and the right side Phoenix will end up falling blink in, though, as Destruction Ultimate is channeled here by this Kali who gets stuck in a portal, but does get a kill. Good landfall sets up for Baked Goods to get a double kill, and Going Ghost is doing everything they can to make this siege work. They did lose the Phoenix, but they got kills in their favor, and they're not done yet. Pushka, good Aegis to live for now. Does get knocked up. The Merlin damage coming through. Will he make it out? It seems like he might. King Valrus did such a good job on the peel there and is now trying to send the rest of the team on a chase for him to make sure that his ADC gets out. But Matt Duck, not wanting that kill to drop, says, I'll do it myself. And that is a full deicide onto the Cyberpunk Otters, who had Enhanced Fire Giant, who got that Phoenix. They end up losing all five members, and now it's aggression out of going ghost. Do you think they can just end this game right now? Depending on what the timers are, no. With Jaxie and Scalpy coming up within a second, they will not be able to end that game alongside Steel Buffs coming up, but they can easily secure this Gold Fury here and get those only Fire Minions getting pushed down mid as well. It's going to be another long game. Through space and time used a bit early there, trying to predict when that Oni Fury might have gone through. Going Ghost will pick that Fury up, and now... Jaxi just backing up here, not wanting to get picked out. That is a big gold swing, though. What was 10,000 in favor of the Otters is now just 5,400. And when we're 36 minutes into this game, 5,000 is not too many. Those fire minions 
are making their way down into the base of going ghosts but they're able to push those away and like you said they will have those oni waves now to help deal with the pressure they have oni fire waves in the mid lane and nobody picked up the bomb oh there we go snake coming over to make sure they have that bomb I feel like momentum has 100% shifted, even with the slight gold deficit still. I mean, would you agree that this game is now, it kind of feels like going ghost is in the driver's seat? Mm, I more so agree with that. They got the fire. Oh, no, they didn't get the fire. They got the Oni. And they're probably going to be able to secure this next FG coming up. But having lost that right Phoenix, if they do not secure this FG then they're going to be more susceptible to a split push in that right lane, pushing those minions into that into that Titan room. It definitely are something they're going to have to, to make sure they're cognizant of. At least it is that right lane that has the uh, downed Phoenix there, the easiest one to defend while also defending this Fire Giant as Fire Giant does spawn here right now and going Ghost does have that positional advantage already we see the tp coming in though for snake as they start stepping up fire giant is pulled by going ghost just trying to bait out some abilities trying to bait a fight not serious about pulling it quite yet vision advantage is in ghost's favor as well in the pit so it will mean that the otters will have to physically step into the pit or have someone nearby if they're going to want to know uh if if it's really getting pulled or what the damage is on it uh i don't think going ghost knows that there are two otters members who are just now starting to head through the jungle towards this they had a brief window with the numbers advantage to try and take a fight or pull the fire giant but didn't opt to do that so we might be in for another dance here in this fire giant pit builds across the board pretty close to done with the exception of supports have to see how this one ends up working out do you have a uh, prediction of which way you think this is going to go for this fire giant fight i i'm going to side with going ghost in this fight they did just prove how they're able to to win these fights even at a disadvantage so now as they're more at a state of even it does lend to the theory that they're going to have the advantage in here not to mention, with just Kyle on this Hercules, just like it was last time with Snake on the Hercules, it just takes one pluck and it can completely turn around a team fight in an instant. So make sure you're paying attention to this Hercules as this team fight starts to get going a little bit further. You see that both Buffs and Charlo are in the mid lane, just making sure those waves are uh, pushing the way they want them to. Both the mid phoenix for the otters and the right phoenix for going ghost have respawned with how long we've been dancing around here so we're back at a state of neutral in that regard as neither team really wants to pull the fire giant here and initiate a fight still just dancing poking feeling stuff out we have dominance was picked up here by pushka selling off that starter just as he did last game where on the other side ornate arrow was uh upgraded it looks like charlo deciding he has enough pin with that executioner doesn't feel like he needs uh needs that dominance opting for that extra uh crit damage and crit strike chance physical uh, basic attack damage, considering he's Jingwei, makes a lot of sense to me. It's going to be one last two raw here for the going for the otters. Depending on how this fight goes, it's game. Yes, this could this could be the game, regardless of which direction this fight heads. As both both teams do have a weak in Phoenix, they can run towards. They do have a pathway into the Titan room if they can get a clean victory here, which is why both teams are playing so safely. Going Ghost do get the Pyromancer, and Calvary Charge comes through, does get the stun onto the Maui, but not too much coming out of that. Another bomb dropped uh, for Going Ghost, who stole that Pyromancer actually from. 
uh, the otters who were pulling it. So that's another bomb. That is the first bomb for this squad so far. Two bombs on the side of the otters. All relics are up. All alts except for that cavalry charge that was just used is up and available. This is going to be a completely even team fight once these teams decide to actually pull the trigger here. What do you think both of these squads are looking for with how safe they're playing? Is what what sort of opening do you think they're trying to find? They're probably trying to find that one win condition to just pull in and get it out of the game. For the Otters, it's more than likely going to be either the Ishtar or that Vamana. And going over for the Going Ghost, it's going to be that Merlin for sure, or the Jingwei. If they can get either one of those two out of the game on either team, then the next, then that fight's just going to go for one way. We see backs coming through here as both teams have wanting to re-up on wards and vision and top up some health bars. As we are 42 minutes into this game thus far, um, taking a look. Builds are fully completed now, um, 100%. We don't see uh, anything too out of the ordinary, minus the crit that is missing for Vickers Kali. Did decide to end up picking that uh, oboe up completely and will get the kill on Scalping Snake. That is a big pick here in what was just a dance for the longest time and not amounting to much as now it's Kyle in the back line who does get the beads out of Pushka, who then alts to try and buy even more time, but a big landfall out. Jaxi does turn one back around onto Charlo though, but just Kyle has a double kill, putting down the Giannis, and now the chase is on for I steal buffs on the Vamana. A dance that felt like it went on forever. All of a sudden, three kills going in favor of the Going Ghost Squad. Another great pull out of Kyle onto this Athena of King Balrus, who's forced to run away. They decide to just ignore that and head towards this mid Phoenix. Buffs is in the back line here, trying to get some damage and goes up into that Colossal Fury ultimate. Can he defend this Phoenix all on his own? He might be able to. Gets one kill onto Baked Goods before he ends up falling. They don't have Charlo here though. So this bird is living for quite a while, will end up falling to Vicar on that Kali. All in all, a good fight out of Going Ghost. They they did exactly what you were talking about. They they waited, they played patiently, and they found that pick. And then it was just the go button. No Fire Giant still available, but they're gonna back up, re get up Vision, heal up, and probably wait for Charlo to come up here in just a second before they start pulling this trigger. Not the pick I really expected there, but them taking up that Guan Yu ult was definitely big for that team. It really worked out in their favor, and Vicar without the crit here still doing quite a bit of damage. I mean, this Guan Yu is tanky, and he was able to eat through it there. Did sell the Golden Blade for a dominance, but decided to keep the Odysseus bow as well. And just Kyle in that fight, I mean, gets the double kill and his pulls have just been on point this entire game as the Fire Giant is down to half HP. Calvary Charge trying to get into the pit there to try and interrupt through space and time was just a bit too early. This is going to be a 50-50 and going Ghost do get the Fire Giant. Landfall comes out as well as Destruction Ultimate as the jump in from Matt Duck. The Going Ghost Squad got the Fire Giant, but can they win the fight? Colossal Fury will put down Matt Duck, and Cyberpunk is not done with this yet. Charging forward, they take out Charlo as well. We could see a bit of a turnaround here as the Otters strip EFG off of two. Jaxi stepping forward as well. And with Charlo and Matt Duck falling, that is gonna slow down what going ghost would have been able to do with their siege losing especially charlo in particular not having that fire giant buff and not having your jingwei at all here at the 46 minute mark definitely slow things down do you think going ghost 
will have a chance to siege or at least defend well? Or are we going to just return to the next Fire Giant dance? I'm really hoping it's not going to be the next Fire Giant dance. But <laughs> missing that Jingwei and the Maui makes it extremely difficult for them to siege here. If I'm the Otters, I'm definitely trying to push down this mid lane because you have more siege potential than wow. those going ghosts. Baker tried to make a play happen there with Kyle on that Fury and it ends up costing them baked goods and Vicar's life. Just Kyle and Matt Duck, all that remain here for going ghost. It's not, I don't really know how I feel about the decision to step up for a primal fury 47 minutes into the game when you're already down two. Might be costly for them here as it's now the otters who are stepping up once again into this left side. Phoenix, uh, Defender of Olympus, getting channeled as well as Colossal Fury as they step in. It looks like they're focusing on the fight instead of the bird for the time being. Now the damage comes through, and that left side Phoenix will fall. It does. Landfall pulls back Pushka. one, and Pushka ends up falling to just Kyle there. The bird goes down, but it's not, it's not perfectly clean. They do lose their ADC. And the chase is on towards King Balrus now. If the hook can land, they might be able to get a kill. But he's got that dash up. Should mean safety for this Athena for the moment. And again, I feel like we're back at another state of almost neutral. Phoenix is one Phoenix down on either side. Members dead on either side. The fire giant getting close to respawning. This might be another game three. It could be, and this could go either direction. Both you couldn't teams... write a better script than this. Yeah. Did I, Hindu Man must have had his hand in this script or something, because this game is very back and forth, very close. Both teams doing everything they can to try and get the win here. With that fire giant spawning up in another minute or so... It seems very much so that the otters have more potential to be able to secure it here. It really does. I mean, their mid phoenix is back up again, so they don't have to worry about fire waves. Where going ghosts have to try and defend the hardest lane on the map to defend while stepping up to the fire giant. The Vicar does have it pushed out quite a ways. He's even going to take the time to clear one last one here. He might be trying to split push? No, he is backing. If I'm so just Vicar there, very, he could have very much so taken that mid Phoenix easily. Just sneak it under them. That's a very good point. Push. As the initiation uh, comes through, through space and time and cavalry charge getting used here. Baked goods in a lot of trouble again as this Guan Yu focuses down the Merlin. But he bit off more than he could chew. Landfall will get the kill. Matt Duck finishing off that Guan Yu there as now it is going ghost who are on the front foot chasing out here vicar gets another kill onto pushka that's two down for the cyberpunk otters a frontliner and most importantly pushka that ishtar is not available anymore adc falling there should be a fairly easy fire giant for going ghost just kyle on the zone making sure that jaxi doesn't get to step up and try to steal and going ghost will get that fire giant and are now on the offensive chase, trying to get down to uh, this this base of the Cyberpunk Otters. Valrus in a bit of trouble as Buffs is deleted by Charlo. That's why you want to keep this Jingwei alive. She hasn't been here for the past few sieges, the past few attempts, but Charlo is here now, and that damage was massive. Valrus is going to do everything he can to try and slow this down, but the bomb plus Charlo will delete that right side Phoenix. Free space and time was just off the mark as they rotate now back around to this mid Phoenix, going ghost on the precipice of being able to take this game number two and put the set to bed. Are going to play it safe. Don't want to make any mistakes that could cost them this game. Wrapping around towards this left lane to deal with the tier two that's still remaining before pushing up and trying to take out that final Phoenix.
Getting this Oni through here is going to help extend those lanes out with those Oni fires. Yeah, if you're if you're the otters here, you're you're probably like, of course it was an Oni Fury. Couldn't have been a Primal Fury or just a Gold Fury. It had to be an Oni Fury. So now we have double Oni Fire Waves to deal with. Not what you would want. Two Phoenixes down. Do you think that the otters have the ability to uh, to defend this final Phoenix and defend their Titan to try and turn things back on their uh, to their side? It'll be extremely tough for them to be able to do that. Even for a late game mid laner, it's tough to deal deal with those Oni fires. They do take a good second to be able to clear them. They definitely do, and we see them just now starting to push down both right and mid lane as the going ghosts are grouping up towards this left lane. We see Vicar in mid who's going to walk those Oni fire waves in mid down towards this base to try and get some extra pressure to allow his team to push in towards this left phoenix and try to put the game to an end. Buffs is aware of it and is over here trying to clear them out, but Vicar is not giving him an inch of space for free. Jaxie's over here. He is mobile. will be able to return uh, quickly as the fight starts in earnest. And before I can even get to the sentence, the left phoenix is just gone. Colossal Fury is out, but he gets onked and deleted by Baked Goods, who gets that kill there. Good landfall again as the Herc Boulder is just quite not enough to finish that kill there. But they are into the Titan Room. Going Ghost is ready to end this game, to end this set. They're trying to do it, but huge damage. Vicar does turn around the kill onto Balrus, but it's Charlo in a lot of trouble using that Jingwei alt, but Pushka gets that kill there. Baked Goods gets the kill onto Scalping Snake. Low health bars here for this going ghost squad as the beads are forced out of Pushka. And is it again going to be Pushka on a defense, this time not completely by himself, but holding off this going ghost team? All three Phoenixes down again, but once more, Cyberpunk Otters hold, and this game will continue now at the 54 minute mark. Here we go for the 20 minutes. It really could. It really could. Titans still sitting nice and healthy, but uh, this is this is just a master class in defense. Two games in a row from Pushka. An easy EFG for going ghost here. I mean, are you are you a betting man? What are you giving the odds here for the uh, the Otters to uh, to take this game now that they have three Phoenixes down? There are their odds of winning this game are one percent. <laughs> <laughs> Being able to push those three lanes against fire minions is extremely difficult because you won't have any minions to be able to combat that. And if they try to step up for this fire giant, they lose both phoenixes yet again. Yeah, they definitely cannot step up to it. Going Ghost waited until Charlo respawned to make sure that their ADC could get that EFG buff, and now they're burning it down. Vicar more than enough to take out the EFG, and they do end up securing it. Those uh, The mid wave has been pushed up quite a ways by uh, the otters here, but the left and right waves aren't in the best spots, and Ice Steel Buffs is already in trouble. Caught out of position, forced into the Colossal Fury. Will it be enough to let him live? It seems like it will be. Landfall used, not quite on the mark there, unable to get the pullback as the dash in from Balros gets a two man confound. The damage is there onto Charlo, and Pushka once again gets a very important pick here on this defense and is sending Going Ghost packing back down this lane. Just Kyle in the middle of four, but totally okay for the moment. As Vicar jumps in, uses that Destruction Ultimate, trying to burn down the Athena and will end up doing so, but uses a lot of his HP par to get the job done. Matt Duck there to make sure that Snake is unable to finish that kill onto the Kali. The right side bird still stands, and without its Charlo, it's a little bit harder for this going ghost squad to step up and try to get this kill, especially since Vicar was forced to back. And Cyberpunk Otters know at the blink in 
from uh, Buffs here is trying to get the kill, and Snake will finish the job onto Baked Goods. Pushka finishes the job onto Just Kyle, and the Cyberpunk Otters are defending this. You gave them a 1% chance to do this, to win the game, and they have not won this game yet, but they again defended their base when they had all three Phoenixes down. Now they have a Phoenix up in right, they have a Phoenix up in mid, the one in left is just about to spawn, and this is anybody's game. We got Vicar stealing that primal. That is a primal for that next FG. I think, how many do they have stacked now? Three? Are they on full stacks of primal? I believe it's gotta be close to that, yeah. He's unable to it. actually it get is. it done. Not having that crit, he easily would have been able to do that if he had the crit. Um, not quite able to get it. I I I'm at a loss for words. This this Cyberpunk Otters team can just is defending so well against what Going Ghost is trying to throw at them. Pushka is just playing safe and always making sure that he's getting damage onto the right person. That's what I feel like the Otters have been doing so well here is that target selection. And we see what it would look like if the Kali had crit with Jingwei actually securing the Primal Fury by herself. It was a lot easier for the Jingwei to do that with those, with all of that crit that she has. The Kali is definitely getting a lot of use out of the, out of that build, though. Being able to melt that Guan Yu and the Athena majority of the time. So I was proven wrong by that. That yeah, seems to be the target here as Colossal Fury and Calvary Charged are used both onto Matt Duck trying to get rid of this Maui who uses the landfall to buy space. Lots of damage onto that Maui, but not enough to get the kill as it's now just Kyle who's in a lot of trouble does manage to get the dash off. Destruction Ultimate has had to be used by Vicar and a good Maui bubble to save the life of just Kyle. Two picks that almost could have been for the Otters. They're just barely getting away as the next EFG is minutes or is moments away from spawning here on this map. That's something you don't really see too often. People actually taking advantage of those Maui bubbles. Yeah, most time it's used for just the like regen and and stuff, but yeah, actually getting a save, very nice. Sure, he could have easily turned around and walked away, but I think it's cooler to pop the bubble. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've seen this a few times between these two games. We're back here with another fire giant dance between the otters and going ghosts. Anybody's game at this point. Nothing, no gold difference, no XP difference has mattered for a long time as Calvary Charge and Two Space and Time are used. Buffs going up into that Colossal Fury again, this time onto Baked Goods. Good damage coming through and will get the kill onto that Merlin. That's a big pick if you're the Otters. That's a lot of burn and damage taken off the field. Seems like they will end up deciding to just sort of back up for now, except for as I say that, Snake does fall. Pushka gets the return kill onto Vicar. Landfall used, trying to pull someone back in, and Balrus is in a lot of trouble. Will end up falling to Charlo. That is two for two so far in this fight. The going ghost feels like they are the ones who can step forward, and it's an aggressive ult from Charlo, trying to catch up with this Giannis, who's just too slippery with those portals. But that should be Fire Giant going the way of going ghost as buffs and... Jaxi are forced to back Pushka, just walking out of base now. Buffs is going to try and get in here, but with good zoning from just Kyle, might not be able to get the jump done. Nice pull back in to make sure that doesn't happen. Through space and time used to make sure that Buff is, is able to get out of that fight. As Jaxi's stepping up here, safe for the moment. Fire Giant around three wastes of this going Ghost Squad. I, but they 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 did lose baked goods and vicar. What do you, what do you rate the odds here of this uh this siege potential as baked goods has two seconds left on his respawn? I mean, cyberpunk otters it looks like have deflected multiple, uh multiple different sieges so far. As long as they can continue getting its charlo out of these fights, I really like their odds at defending. Right now, the question is, can either team really get a siege through? 
fake uh fake goods if they have to defend very great defense merlin is well known for what he can do on defense but again the question really comes down to can either side break through and it has so been a game of defense so far neither side both sides bending but not breaking uh as I'm sure everybody can hear, we are now joined by Mechanist Caduceus here in the casting booth. Welcome in, welcome into a now 62 minute game here in this Merlin Division matchup. Just lay on that through time and space, HR Jaxi really trying to seal that, but just a moment or two off. We see this going Ghost Squad grouping up here on the left side, starting to push down this wave as they will have those Oni waves in all three lanes, getting ready to begin another siege here in game number two. Vicar over there on the right, getting ready to make sure that the, the, uh, the Oni waves over there can push in to try and do a bit of a split and add extra pressure to what will already be a pretty hard defense from the Cyberpunk Otter Squad, who, as you said, have shown that they can do this before. Absolutely, and here they go, Guan Yu trying to just keep out these waves of minions over here on this left side. The Athena ulting over to Jaxi on that right side, trying to keep, and successfully, keeping the Kali out as three on four, the Otters are making this work. They really are. That mid bird is taking a bit of damage, but Jaxi gets the kill onto Vicar. That is a big pick for the Otters on this defense once again. All three birds still standing, so successful once more from the Otters as going ghosts start to back up, realizing they just can't break the base of this Cyberpunk Otters team. Now, at this point, bo both sides are they're full build. So this 12 or what was 12,000 at one point now 8,000 gold difference pointless does not matter yep gold difference we're, we don't care anymore this is a even game and really honestly the otters it might even be in their favor that they have that gold difference because that that uh those gold chests right there can get them a few more power pots and stuff like that yeah, that's really all this gold difference is anymore, is 3k pots, power pots, and vision. But both teams having just plenty of gold, I would assume, to get whatever they need as our focus shifts back towards this right side of the map and towards another EFG. Buffs in the back line on, iced, on baked goods here. Good flicker to buy a bit of time, but Snake will get the kill. Defender of Olympus charged onto that Colossal Fury as the... Otters are charging forward. Big damage onto Matt Duck there. Not quite enough to get the kill, but now it's just Kyle in trouble who will get rooted out by that Ishtar and stunned out by that Ishtar as well. Jaxi getting credit for that kill as the Otters step up to the base now of this going ghost squad. This right side Phoenix will not last very long, and it doesn't indeed. It does end up falling two down on the side of going ghost and the cyberpunk otters want to extend this to a game three they're stepping into the titan room but vicar blinks forward stuns out pushka but then gets absolutely blown up forced to use destruction just to survive good landfall pulls two back in balrus is in a lot of trouble and vicar will get the kill but the titan falls and the cyberpunk otters will win the 65 minute game two and push us to a game three in this Merlin division set. Absolutely. And toward the end of that there, once you look up and you see a, a 90 second gray screen for a player, <laughs> it, that, that hurts. You almost know it's over from there. You, you, you get that feeling that what, what am I going to do here? What are we going to do? Though great resiliency shown by this Cyberpunk Otters Merlin team. An absolute, just, that that was a marathon of a game. Yes, Th yes that's, it was. This, Can't even bring the set into account. I wasn't here for the first game. That's a marathon of a game. I was only here for the last 10 minutes, but I can look at a 65 minute and say, 
huh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you are 100% right. And that, you know, at, that is off the back of a game one that went 53 minutes. So this set is, is going to be pushing the like limits of focus that these players are going to have as we start to head into uh, then all important game three. We're going to take a quick break. That way I can get some water before we head into game number three to see if Going Ghost or the Cyberpunk Otters can take this set. Game three here in this Merlin division matchup between Going Ghost and the Cyberpunk Otters. The first game went 53 minutes. The second game went 65 minutes. And now it is time to finally pick a find out who the winner is going to be between these two teams as the picks and bands start to come through. I am still Dr. Shrew, joined by Mechanis and Rosie Panda on the cams. What are you thinking about the... the uh... The set so far, me Mechanus. Well, uh, to start, they're going through these picks and bands real fast. It is very clear that uh, they don't want this to go that much longer. Uh, so let's go ahead and go over the bands right quick. That is Thor, Marticorus, Hibwa, 
Bamata and Bakasura all currently banned out by the two teams. Going to spanning Thor, Hebois, Bakasura, and the Cyberpunk Otter, Otters banning Martikaris and the Mana. Um, quite honestly, Martikaris, a very good mid laner right now, is just AMC 2.0. Uh, Thor, there's a lot of things he can do that no one else can really do. Hercules, the final ban, and Terra, the first pick. So I, I, I'm going to go ahead and just pose that question back to you with all that being said and ask you where <laughs> you think we are. Well, Terra has been banned away every, uh, in both games so far in this first set, in these first two games. So she's finally getting through <laughs> here. Going Ghost going to pick that up for Matt Duck. I feel like that's a very strong pickup. The changes to her alt adding those extra mitigations just make her so strong at the moment and the otters getting rid of the vamana and the hercules both teams have had both of those picks before and the otters just saying you know what we don't want to deal with those uh again on either side absolutely both very good solo lane picks right now with the vamana as well being good out of the jungle they will as merlin are They're they go ahead to... and select both of their carries here and this just, th this feels very Jaxi Pushka. Th this feels like them right now. And it really that, does. And the way that Pushka was playing that Ishtar last game, I do not like going ghost chances right now. Yeah, Pushka was just able to, to do so much on those crazy defenses that allowed them to come back into that game. And if you add in a Merlin and the great siege defense and objective burn that he can bring. It's a very strong top two picks for the Otters. And as you said, they got their carries out of the way. They don't have to worry about digging deeper into the god pool for both mid and ADC. So that will be helpful as we continue through the picks and bands here as Susano and Guan Yu are locked in by Going Ghost. Two phenomenal picks for the front line of Going Ghost and Terra and Guan Yu, and then is Susano with one of, with one of the best, if not the best, team fight ults out of the jungle in the entire game. The only one on par that is arguably better is the Hunbot's ult, Fear No Evil. But that that tsunami of or uh, I forget, is it tsunami? Typhoon. Typhoon. Thank you. Typhoon out of Susano being quite the ult to have to walk into or walk around or deal with in any capacity. And he's definitely going to be able to bring a lot uh, in that jungle uh, role there. Vicar not opting for an auto attack jungler as he has in both previous sets already. We do see, um, I, I, I'm curious is what I meant to say, if, if the otters are going to pick up a jungler here, in both games so far, Going Ghost has really focused the jungle bands, and now that they've locked in Susano, they could continue to do that in the second phase. And with the Odin lock in, it does seem like the Otters are comfortable with buffs getting banned out pretty heavily and still able to pick something he's comfortable on. So one of the greatest things you can have is a jungler or a support that just, their god pool is an ocean. If either of those two were comfortable on a majority of picks, good luck seeing them not be effective in a game. Because if your rotating roles have the widest god pools, you're pretty well set to be able to affect the map however you want. Yeah, and I, it seems like that's what Buffs does have as we see Hunbats and Mercury band out against him with Rama and... Tiamat banned away by the Otters on the other side. Notably to me, Agni is still available. Uh, Going Ghost could choose to pick that up. It has been banned away a couple times so far here in this set and uh, is now left open, much like the Terra was earlier. Standing no barrier to our success. Ganesh going to be picked up by the Cyberpunk Otters. A very, very strong pick. The... Uh... But with the pillars, the three that goes through walls, there's so much available to him there. I mean, he kind of ignores Terra. 
He does, and he can he can be very annoying against Terra uh, with that silence shutting down her dashes. Uh, can be a bit annoying to play against in the in the laning phase, and we saw in game one how good King Balris looked on this Ganesh pick. So I definitely like giving it back to him here in this all important game three. As Scylla Charybdis are the last two lock ins for Going Ghost. Scylla, not your traditional mid laner right now. Definitely an artillerist, but the ult got to get pretty in there for and. Crush is not the furthest range ability in the game either. So, not to mention her, uh, her pretty bad early game. So, going into Merlin, you're letting him get that advantage. And you're saying, I can do more than you late game. But I don't know if that's true going into a Merlin. This, this going ghost draft to me screams aggression. It screams we don't want another 50 or 60 minute game. They're going to be diving in with that Terra and Guan Yu leading the charge. Susano, as we already mentioned, having that great team fight all and the mobility to get in as well. And then Scylla and Charybdis both having those CC immune ultimates that they can charge forward with to get big damage. I expect once... Uh, they get a few levels under their belt, a couple items. I expect just W keen out of this going ghost squad. Absolutely. Really, the only one I don't expect a W key again, that Scylla really does scream. We've watched a lot of these games go really late, and we got something in the back pocket for that. But every single other member of that team, it's really Scylla and Susano who deal with the late game at the end of it all. On the flip side, you've got the Otters, the Ishtar, the Merlin, hell, the Ganesh, all three of which are very strong in the late game, though Ganesh does have moments in the early. And he does. I mean, sorry, once you get those Dharmic Pillars up, uh, he just he can bring a lot to a team fight. That ult can make a lot of space. It can deal a lot of damage and just set up so well for your team and if you pair that with the Odin cage once they get into these team fights in that mid game it's going to start bringing a lot of pressure onto this going ghost squad absolutely and you look at the Scylla the Charybdis there I, I think Charybdis can get out of the Odin cage with that three I'm not entirely sure I know the Scylla can because it counts as elite but the Susano dashes not going to do it for you Guan Yu not a chance Terra what is she going to do? Break down the Odin Cage with the dash? Yeah. So those three are going to be trapped in the cage with Odin, and it might be able to separate the fight enough that Scylla and Charybdis might not be very safe, and that's usually what you play Charybdis for is that safety. So we'll see how this turns out. We will. We haven't talked about this Ratatosker that I imagine is going the way of Ice Steel buffs in the jungle. Lots of different build paths he can take with that pick. He could go sort of a hybrid, almost tanky route if he wanted. He could get that Thistlethorn Acorn to, uh, to deal extra damage and have an easier time stunning. And he does have a crit acorn available to him. With how good crit is, I wouldn't say it's out of the realm of possibility that we see that. In fact, if the if that rat ends up in the jungle and we're not seeing a uh, and we're not seeing we can try and make a comeback through here, um, then that's what I expect is a crit rat, and it will indeed be rat in the jungle. So, uh, those of you six six seven fan eh, six six seven fans uh, might be a little <laughs> bit disappointed, uh, but. One of the things that Rat is going to be able to bring, especially with that Acorn that he's already got at Tier 2, is he's just faster than everybody else on the map right now. There could be a Mercury on the other side. Rat is still faster right now. And here we go. The clear of going ghost looks pretty good as it is. But... Either side really getting the advantage in clear, both sides clearing at about the same time. Not just in mid, but in duo as well. Ushka Balrus almost done with their buff camp. 
as Matt Duck and Charlo are, are just about done there as well. Both sides getting the lane right at the same time. Already fighting going on over in the solo lane, and you can see both teams just getting in there. They don't want this game going long. Uh, they've already played a lot of smite here at the highest level that they can, so you know there's going to be a bit of fatigue. They're going to want to put this game to bed uh, as quickly as possible. In the dual lane here, we've seen Pushka go that sort of uh, off-meta build route, and I don't imagine we see anything different here because he's still on that Ishtar. I imagine he builds what he did last time. But I'll be interested to see if the Charybdis... Uh, kind of shakes up the build path that Charlo wants to go down because it is a different style of god. So Charybdis still does a really good job with crit. Don't don't ever let those three softer autos at the end fool you. She hits all three of those. It's even stronger than... Honestly, I think it's about one and a half standard autos if she hits all three of those. So it, it's still pretty potent. But... Definitely something to be aware of is you still, you have to hit them. You so, do indeed. Uh, Victor over here clearing the uh, Harpies. Just going ahead and grabbing that mid XP, trying to get going goes to head and farm as quick as possible. As uh, we've got a gank over in the solo lane, this should be a kill. Onto the Guan Yu! I steal buffs, wow. able to get in behind him, and Scalping Snake getting first blood. On that Guan Yu, just Kyle going down in solo. Cyberpunk Otters get on the board. For Talked a moment already. there. Talked about already, both these teams want to end it quick. It looks like, yet again, that's exactly what we're seeing that they're trying to do. 100%. For a moment there, it looked like just Kyle might have been able to make it out. I steal buffs just missing that acorn stun. Ended up firing it the wrong way, and it gave gave just Kyle a glimmer of hope, but that Odin spear able to get the job done and give him that first blood bounty over there in the solo lane. Give him just that little bit of an advantage. He's level 5, has that cage available already. And as you said, it seems like I Steal Buffs is wanting to get active early. And when you're on a Ratatoskr, I, I agree. I feel like he's very good in the early game, especially once he gets that through the Cosmos ultimate. He should be starting to make his way over here towards the dual lane to uh, set up another gank. If I'm the rat, I'm not, if, since you're looking toward the early game, I'm not nearly as worried about ganking dual lane as I am about ganking solo. And letting this Odin get ahead of Guan real fast and start to punish the mid lane, punish the duo lane for the fact that the the Susano is staying over at that left hand side. As long as Pushka and Balrus can keep things locked down on this left side, everything will be a okay for him. It's going to suck, but I, I feel like that's what they need to do. Very true. I mean, we've seen what Pushka's able the to do. Coming down, they're flat, they're laying into one of the tower. I still buffs, ending up getting the kill, scalping the snake, barely getting away from that. And it looks like the otters are going with exactly what I think was thinking they would want to do here. They are making the life of just Kyle miserable right now. Just Kyle is just miserable. Very true. I mean, 0-2 already here, just four minutes into the game, unable to really do what he's wanting to over there in that solo lane. You can see that he does have the Tainted Steel pickup for Scalping Snake, which means that the uh, Sekhmet that we saw uh, Kyle, or we saw Snake pick up last game on that Guan Yu as a I fight I see Bugs out. rotating over, Darmic Pillars out from King Balorus, and Duck caught out and it looks like Charlo's going down too! The Otters come out swinging right now! And Buffs going absolutely ham onto this going ghost team! Up down from the Odin, 
and both solo laners right here at half health. Victor Fortunato looking at the opposing blue buff and going to get it and just walk away. Good rotation out from the jungler. Buffs running in. Doesn't really want to fight right now, it looks like, as Victor Fortunato is just going to roll through that gold buff area. Jackson Ballard is on a mission right now on this Ratatosker. 2 0 oh, 1 already, just six minutes into this game, starting into that transcendence tree there with his item. He has been all over this map focusing that solo lane for the most part, but does make that rotation over to dual lane and is able with that increased speed from the acorn, as you were talking about, just kept up with Charlo in that ultimate of the Charybdis and just managed to set up a great gank over there to put his team even further ahead. Now almost 2,000 gold in the lead are the Cyberpunk Otters. The Otters looking to punish Charlo here. Buffs and Balrus rotate back over. And I don't think that's going to be enough. The Garment Pillars come down and Charlo gets stunned on top of them. It's like kill the Pushka right on top of those pillars. Another great rotation from I Steel Buffs. As I was just talking about him, he just continues to apply pressure all across this map, stealing away the green buff right there as well. He has just been a menace. A thorn well, I mean, in the is, side of this going ghost team. He is named I Steal Buffs. I, I expect him to steal buffs. <laughs> isn't, isn't that just kind of how that goes? I assume. I assume he must be. He must have got that name from somewhere. Daxty making a rotation now as the Merlin tries to burn down the Guan Yu, but it's not going to be enough. Jaxy's going to go ahead, take the the rotation tax, and walk away. Man, leave just Kyle alone. My man has just been forced back over and over. Even Jaxie getting Jaxie in on it in now. in trouble now. Bait Goods though misses the ult. The leap away and Bait Goods should be fine. As Matt Duck makes his way into the lane. Both supports at full health. I steal buffs and Victor Fortunato fighting on that left-hand side of the jungle. But buffs... Wants to back out. Not enough support from his team for that fight. Realizing going ghost is a lot closer than they are. We do see both hunters actually opting for the Devos here. We've seen Pushka pick that up every single game so far this set. But now it's Charlo joins him on the Charybdis. I was wondering if he would play it any differently with the kind of different setup that... Charybdis has as an ADC and is opting to mix it up a little bit, picking up the Devos. I wonder if he's been convinced by Pushka's play so far, or if he just likes the Devos Gauntlet on Charybdis in particular. So the Devourer's Gauntlet, they did, they gave it the same kind of treatment Book of Thoth got a while back, and they gave it flat penetration on evolution. Well, there you go. We're seeing that really come into play. So now it comes down to which hunter can use it better than the other. A scalping snake once into just Kyle. But just Kyle, that healing too much right now. The Odin anti-heal not going to be enough. The slow and the stun out from the Odin. A lot of damage and the ult coming through. Scalping Snake needing to avoid the stun to jump a little bit late, but does good damage. Yet again, another stun coming through on just Kyle. Is this going to be a solo kill in that solo lane? Possibly. Maybe not. And it looks like just Kyle is just going to get away, but the stun Ooh. missed by Scalping Snake. Just Kyle just barely gets away. Scalping Snake showing why Odin is a good pick right now. That was all on his own. No help was coming. And he was just kind of styling on just Kyle as rotation does come through now from Jaxi. Jaxi looking to come help get a kill alongside Balrus. That is a lot of backup coming the way of the 
Otter's solo laner as that is going to be a kill on just Kyle. They do not want this Guan Yu to have an inch of breathing room. Now 0 and 3 just constantly under pressure. If it's not by Ice Steel buffs on the rat, Jaxie's rotating over. Now we have King Balrus rotating over. Scalping Snake is just doing everything he can to put pressure on him even when nobody's over there. Just Kyle just can't get off the ground. You could say he just can't catch a break. Yeah. As that Caduceus Club gets finished over for the Guan Yu. Should be a good item for him. He is a team healer. But I, I don't know about first item like that. And Ice Steel buffs rotating on a Charlo in the back of their jungle is going to use through the Cosmos to get out of danger. A big ultimate on cooldown for Cyberpunk, but they do the get the purple buff, yeah. He got the buff. I mean, that's kind of job done for Ice Steel buffs. He, you know, he had to use that through the Cosmos ult, but he's going to have that Evolve Transcendence soon, so he'll have a little bit of cooldown. And he's been he's been able to be active on this map without using that ultimate too much anyway, so it's not too much of a loss. He got that purple buff out. Going ghost, grabbing the oracles. Bauer is not quite able to take that away. And Victor Fortunato going to walk away. Not enough back up there for Bauer to want to stay in. As Jaxi is very low, under the tower and the. The shell, a perfect shell from Balor is going to save Jaxi. That's actually, that was Jaxi's shell. He went beads shell on the Merlin. Shell. He's got his own shell and he did oh. pop both of his relics there to live in that moment. Interesting that relic pickup is, for the mid laner. This is going to be a very interesting decision indeed. Uh, Victor Fortunato going to go ahead and drop the support buff here. And just take another uh, as Charlo very low. The rat not quite able to get it done. In fact, the rat now forced out as Susano is going to pick up a major blow with Cyberpunk Otters. Their jungler Ice Steel buffs going down and giving a kill over to Going Ghost jungler. That's what we, that's what you, you talk about when you talk about the safety of a Charybdis pick, being able to completely invulnerable in that dash, in that mobility option. It's like Soul 3, but it comes out faster. It's very good, and Charlo's using it to the best of his abilities at the moment. A great job just surviving there, knowing that his team was on that rotation to get the pick. Does look like the going otters ghost. Hit it, though. Wow, going ghost, baked goods, able to get that uh, or get the pyro oh. with crush and steal it away. Though it doesn't look like anyone will be there in time to pick up the pyro bomb. It does, however, mean going ghost come back into this game a little bit. They get team wide gold and team wide XP. Yeah, a good play out from Baked Goods there to make sure Victor that that happens. Fortunato. He does pick it up. He's got the bomb. Able to get over there in time to pick up the bomb and make sure that they do get the full benefit of taking the Pyro. We do see a difference in builds here after the Devourer's Gauntlets between these two hunters. Pushka doing what he's done all three games so far this game, this set. Picking up that Rage in that slot to start getting some extra crit while uh, Charlo opting for more the more standard Hunter build, even with the Devo's choice over Bloodforge, still wanting to pick up that Boomerang, heading back into the crit tree right afterwards. We'll have to see which uh, one comes out on top with their uh, different takes on how to build carry right now. Honestly, I pr I prefer Rage myself, just having more crit and not having to spend as many items on it. I feel like it's generally going to feel like a lot better an option. 
But hey, I mean, Blade of Boomerang has a great effect and people are picking it up for a reason. Very, very good effect and gives attack speed. It has a lot of things you want. I, that's all there is to say about that. It has a lot of things you want. 1700 gold lead for the otters here as we're just about 16 minutes into this game this gold fury has been around for a bit i imagine both of these squads are gonna start setting up towards it here fairly soon we might see a bit of a fight around the first big neutral objective of the game honestly i'm surprised that neither objective has fallen any sooner as Matt just trying to put a little bit of pressure on that ADC as his jungler goes down away from him. Jaxi able to pick up the kill yet again off of those darn pillars. King Valorus coming up massive for the Otters. And the Otters able to take the Cold Fury. Matt Duck not able to really even attempt to steal that away. As it's Carlo going to go ahead and grab his buff. And both teams will reset here. Never mind, the Otters want this mid-tier 1 tower, and they're gonna get it. Not even a step up, except maybe to throw that crush in there, but it looked like it didn't hit anybody. Well, it's like the Cyberpunk Otters were listening to me. I said, well, that Gold Fury might want to fight for it soon. They were like, bet, they got a pick, they stepped up won that fight cleanly and were able to take that gold fury pushing their lead to right around 4000 just under at the current moment which is a fairly a fairly decent lead here at the 17 minute mark it's going to allow them to start to try and snowball this game they're up 7 to 1 in kills and uh, it seems like they definitely are on they're keeping their foot on the gas pedal not wanting these this set to uh, extend any longer than it already is Absolutely. Charlo going to go ahead and clear out the ward cover to the otters on their side of the map as Pushka rotates back in the lane and a fight breaks out over there by the look of it. But scalping snake, eight. did he land that? It sounded like he landed that stun. He might, that might have been only the second charge up of the Odin uh, spear that auto aims. Not entirely sure, mm. but the blink in over this pyromancer. And a rotation to mid, but it looks like nothing will come of it. As Cyberpunk has all their members here as well. Big fight breaking out as Captain Snake. Nothing doing. Just gonna look for the mid lane. Again, nothing doing. Just gonna go ahead and grab the stun and support and walk away. Though the Otter's jungler looking at that solo laner yet again. This is where you gotta start being careful. You got both teams over here in mid lane. And the first solo laner to go away is and there it is. The otter is going to go ahead and grab the pyro. They are All going ghost started rotating left a little bit and had their their solo laner back and it's just a clear window for the otters to step up and do that not really anything on the left side of the map up right now for going ghost to rotate over to so an interesting decision to kind of seed pressure on that pyromancer I mean, they had pushka that they could rotate over to he's a kill They they definitely could have tried that, but they opted to come back towards the mid lane. Not really working out. Uh, don't don't know if I particularly uh, like the call there, but right now, Cyberpunk Otters with a sweeping lead over their opposition. About a half level lead in ADC. Probably about a half level lead as a support, and it looks like about. A half a level to level lead in the jungle as well. There's just some solid leads building up as Juan caught in the cage alongside the jungler and Susano not able to get away. But Guan going after the rat with the cavalry charge. Not gonna be able to do that. The Odin, the blink in my steel buffs, Odin leaping in. 
the stun out from Ice Steel Bombs, but Crush keeping them away. Jaxi getting the kill. And a leap out from Baked Goods, able to get him out of danger. And somehow, some way, it's a 2 nothing for the Otters. Good rotations out of the Otters teams there to make sure that that fight went in their favor. Vicar trying to use the alt at the end to try and set up for his team. Unfortunately died before it could even have a chance to go off. And then Kyle knew his team was rotating as well and decided to turn back around on the cavalry charge. But the Otters rotated faster and were able to get both of those kills without dropping anything. Well, they were fighting on the Otter side of the map, too, so I would be surprised if they weren't fast. As the Otters go ahead and start up the Gold Fury. And they should get it here pretty easily. No contest at all by going Ghost. And this game has gone from bad to worse. This is getting out of hand. It definitely is starting to about 7,000, maybe 6,500 in favor of the Otters now, assuming I can math correctly. Matt Duck caught out in the jungle is going to be able to get away. Terra dash through to get the root and just dash away. We're at the you point in the no. game now where this is... The mid laner caught out by th through the cosmos. The tower almost securing the kill. Two ultimates down for the Otters, but nothing to come of it. Buffs got very low there. It was a very aggressive play to try and get a pick there in mid. Luckily, he didn't end up paying for it with his life. He was able to back, spend up a little bit more gold, and come back out here. But we're at this 22-minute mark now where fights going the way of the Cyberpunk Otters as they have been will start leading towards this Fire Giant. The Going Ghost can't really afford to drop a couple members in another team fight because it will just be giving away a uh, a, a fairly early fire giant here towards the cyberpunk otters if you're looking at the way this game is going right now that is a level and a half lead in the jungle about a level lead in solo two level level and a half two level lead in support the only level 20 that got caught out the cage is down Phantom shell burned! And there is no way the support can step back up as the Guan Yu steps in to make sure his team is able to get out. Matt Dot going to go ahead and return to base. Just be a looks pyro like the for Otters the going to go ahead and take the pyro. Victor Fortunato going to go ahead and look at this tower over here and left. You're the otters, you know exactly where that jungler is. This should be a fire giant call. Looks like that's exactly what it is. They're starting to burn it already. I seal buffs in the air. Looking to come back down on the solo laner of the of going ghosts. He dashes away, the fire giant getting low, the otters get the fire giant. And the solo laner here going to stay at that half health. Both teams disengaged. Nothing real big there. Just that's what happens when you split push and it's a, a far lane like that. You give up major objectives. Victor they did. The moment he appeared on that wave there, Vicar, on that left side, the otters just instantly jumped into that pit. Both. Uh, Snake and Buffs were doing a great job of zoning over there. And when you have a Merlin and you have an Ishtar with crit, Fire Giant is going to melt very quickly. And between the zoning and that burn damage, they're able to get that Fire Giant pull uh, and, and secure it for themselves. A Drowned Onk for this, uh, this Ganesh here. Very interesting decision if you ask me blighted on personally i like it better uh being able to heal your team off of what the enemy is doing increasing your effective health but drowned on could be a very aggressive decision and if they're able to make use of it it does burn quite a bit 
feel like that is aggression is just what the otters are going for. When we were in picks and bands, I thought it would be going ghost, but it's been all Matt otters. Matt Dunk got course. out. Matt Dunk deleted. Where did he go? As Charlo is able to get away, the rat coming in, forcing the ult out of Charlo. I steal buffs, trying to deal with Vicar Fortunato. As he's not going to be able to get away. The cage. The perfect cage. Pushka getting the kill! Cavalry charge in, but not enough! Just Kyle going down! Beware. To a great start are these otters on this siege. They're still tier twos up, but it doesn't seem like they care at all. Pushing to right get, towards this left Phoenix. We get to two big picks. We're, we're 26 minutes in. This isn't the start anymore. Start to the siege. Start to the siege. Is what I meant. No, that, and the bomb fair. goes off, and that is just the bird dead. I've, they got two picks. They walked in. They grabbed that left side phoenix. That was as clean as it gets. Look at their health bars. Buffs is the, the only one who looks like he's taking any damage. Are playing this so clinically? Where was this in the past two games? They, they've had this the whole time, but they drug us on for an hour, almost two hours. That's crazy. True. I am so sorry you had to put up with those long games, considering what <laughs> just happened. I love it, I love it. <laughs> no, that, but... This is just, this is such a different team. Uh, the, uh, the, the, otters, here. the Otters just playing very clinically. There is, it, it almost feels like nothing can go wrong for this team right now. Everything they are doing across the map is just working yeah take a look at the player damage i mean all four members minus balris there at the top of the player I mean, damage charts that, and it's just like an it's been clean that's yeah like exactly ash. i and he's beating out his lane opponent which is a terra so you know they're just all across the board winning these fights winning their lanes winning their oh, matchups absolutely, it's absolutely. Just very clean the 10, gold difference really starting to tell a story here as going ghost is getting further and further behind the otters going ahead and it looks like they'll go ahead and pull this fire giant and it looks like going ghost isn't going to contest they're nowhere nearby they know where jaxi is they know where the jungler is they're going to the other side of the map this is going to be a oh, fire no. giant and this is going to be both tier two, t uh, both tier two towers at this rate. I don't know how I feel about that call. I mean, you're almost 10k down. I understand you don't like your odds in that fight there in the jungle, but giving up a free fire giant when there's still tier two, two tier twos to further extend this gold lead is putting a lot of trust in your siege defense. And I, I just, I don't know. I don't feel like that was quite the right decision. I don't see a good defense for them. Baked goods. I mean, Scylla's crush is great, but doesn't bring quite enough, especially with the, what this Merlin can do to that wave. It was there, and then it wasn't. There is no real wave just yet, but another wave coming up behind the Cyberpunk Otters. This should be just about to start as that wave enters, gets blown up by the Scylla. Good crush and good dog there to make sure that that wave doesn't get in, but the otters, they're chomping at the bit. They are going for a 4-1 split, putting buffs in the mid lane to keep pressure on that mid phoenix as well. Gives Vicar something to pay attention to, trying to pull him away from the rest of the sieges to blink in. Odin going in, the cage is down, and the otters using it to split the fight, but they're not going to be able to get that phoenix. Just Kyle going into the back line. But where did he go? Typhoon down. Threw the cosmos down. And there's nothing really going here. The uh, scalping snake going to have to leap away. And yet again, the otter's going to have to reset. They did get the mid bird, though. So job done. Buffs was able to pressure that out while the team fight was happening in right. So they got a phoenix. They weakened the one in right a little bit. And they do have the ability to step up. Buffs could catch out Vicar, though. Or the other way around. Instead, Vicar catching out Buffs. The dash 
And it looks like Charybdis is gonna go catch I Steal buffs! But it doesn't matter! It does not matter if you cannot defend the Titan! The wall is down! Boris is down! Charlo coming up massive on this defense! Daxi wants the Titan but cannot get it! Charlo! Massive on the defense! Triple kill to the ADC! But, in return, that left side Phoenix cannot stay up. And going Ghost, still going to have to defend. All three Phoenixes down. Titan at critical HP right now. That was an incredible defense from Charlo to make sure that that game didn't end right then and there. But if you are the Cyberpunk Otters, you did what you came for. You got all three Phoenixes. You almost ended and killed that Titan. And, and yes, now... you got rebuffed, but you have the ability to reset and step up in the dominant position for what will be an enhanced Fire Giant once it respawns on this map. Not just an EFG. They are about to have three Oni Fire Waves. This is not looking good for Going Ghost. They have to step up with this Fire Giant. You cannot give it away. At the same time, you can't step up for this Fire Giant because there are three Oni Fire Waves that just now spawn and are now running at your Titan. This is a horrible spot to be in, and this Fire Giant isn't going to do you any favors. Look at that spawn timer. Look at the spawn timer. Going Ghost trying to fight right here in the jungle right now. They know they have to get a fight here, and they have to win it. Victor Fortunato backing, though is going to have to defend these waves, especially left. And going ghosts are just in a position being pulled too many ways. They really are. Fire Giant is burning fast as well. Cage off the Just mark, Kyle though. in that back line, running through on the cavalry charge, stunning ice steel buffs. Otters get the giant. Kyle goes down. Through the cosmos, channeled in through. Matt Duck stunned. Trying to get away! And instead, Carlo will go down, paying for the sins of his team as Matt Duck tries to stall, but will also fall. Baked goods, low on health. Victor Fortunato goes down, and that will be the game! Cyberpunk Honors are going to win the set two to one! What an incredible, just different gear that the Cyberpunk Otters found to put that game to bed in just 32 minutes after two incredible barn burners of a game one and a game two. They just, they, they turned, they clicked it on. They found a different mode it's, to just win that game. It's not even a different game. gear. That, they jumped from third to seventh. Yeah. They, they bypassed the highway gear. They're, they're sitting <laughs> Unbelievable. Sitting there in, in, in their exotic McLaurin just saying, hey, watch me accelerate from 60 to 200. Scalping Snake on that Odin going 2-0 and 12 with 50k mitigated in a 30-minute game. He was just a constant thorn in the side of that going Ghost Squad, almost getting solo kills onto just Kyle. That early aggression that the otters were focusing on that side of the map trying to put just kyle behind worked and it, it they just it allowed that odin to flourish for that entire game absolutely odin is a character that you need to get online early and that's what they did they just had rat rotate over twice they had jaxi rotate over twice they just kept pressure on excuse me they just kept pressure on just kyle they didn't let Kyle get up and do anything, and because of that, Odin was free to build ahead and do whatever he wanted. And you can see it. The Otters are sitting here all full build. Silo's missing an item, Terra's missing an item, and Guan is missing an item. It really does help that for all these jungle fights as well, the Retasker, Protector of the Jungle, where Susano had Boomba's spear. I don't know what more the Cyberpunk Otters could have done because they did it all.
They really did. Two and a half hours for the set, and they come out with the victory. Unbelievably well played by the Otters there in that last game. Both teams giving everything they got over the entirety of the set. Is going to do it for us here in this set uh, for the moment. Thank you, everybody, for watching and hanging out. And uh, we hope to see you in the next one. Yeah.